Yes, hi. What would Caloron like to do during the time break? Uh, train at the temple a little bit and learn how to use the scimitar. That's all? I mean... I'm sure there is more. <laughs> yeah, I mean, manage the estate. You know, I want to do the Shrine of Saiyan Ray. I want to make a little graveyard thingy. Uh, contact oh, Felix. Uh, um, go at God Y, essentially. Yeah, the... the the uh contacting felix would probably be the easiest thing and probably the first thing you do all things considered yeah um, I, the way i envisioned it it's like he essentially gives air night like the first week before everybody breaks and it's like if you don't contact him by this time it's like you know what i won't worry about it gotcha um because like, at that discussed, point she just can't do it we, we discussed the pricing on the whole um uh, pseudo sanitary thing right uh yes it was five gold per uh, five gold pieces per marker, ten gold pieces for the mason's tools, which I do not have proficiency in. Nope. And then it's 150 gold for the crystal shrine and 25 gold for the silver to, like, bless yeah. it, essentially. Yeah, so basically, um, you want to knock all that off right, right now? Fuck it. Why not? Okay. Because uh, basically, you, you, you've you got a good chunk of change that you need to get rid of. So, mm -hmm. it's like 150 plus 25, it's 175. Plus, well, it's two ten for everything. It's two ten for everything. Yeah, I did all this math. This is why I wanted my notebook because I wrote all this shit down. Oh, okay. Uh, that makes it a lot easier. So, yeah, uh, I'm gonna make a quick modification to the handout uh, for the estate. I mean, at the same time, he wouldn't like necessarily broadcast the information that hey, we have a mini summary. It's, it's more like it's still noticeable. Okay, fine. Well, uh, no, no I'll, I'll, I'll say I'll say the the cemetery. Keep saying cemetery like it's a real cemetery. The pseudo cemetery, mm -hmm. eh? Not exactly. Um, so you have a shrine to Serenry. Um, mm -hmm. You've got. We'll say the shrine itself was installed near the water, so that like around dawn it would like shine through it and like make the water all pretty. So basically, a clearing, uh, clearing towards the east, where basically the sun could shine through it at dawn. Mm -hmm. Into the pond, because Cal likes water. Thing for him, you know. Since he's a sailor or a pirate, depending on how you look at it. Eh, pirate. All all pirates are sailors, but not all sailors are pirates. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh. Hey, the the outdoor training area. Do you think it'd be a good idea to have that uh, installed in like? Because uh, I know I know Gale wants like a hedge maze, like a wild, wild garden area. Mm -hmm. Do you think it'd be a good idea to have that there? Um, I mean, I was talking I'm... with Chase about it, and it sounds like he wanted the wild garden nearest to the pond, so it has like this very natural, like kind uh, of yeah. nature look. Uh, I'll I'll worry about the detail for the uh, training area later. Yeah, um, it's somewhere. It is somewhere. So first off, how many how many of those graves do you have? Uh, five. Five. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I'm gonna need you to roll uh the stone masonry tools five times. Okay. I mean, they are dexterity based, so they're basically just dex checks. Yeah. I mean, I would have figured. Since Cal wants this to be like actually pretty, I would cast an enhanced ability on myself for this. I'd and... imagine so, yes. So you're like, yeah, like I was gonna do a thing, like this is not something he does in a die either. He like he takes time with it. Yeah. Uh, uh, so... I, I will say, unfortunately, uh, taking twenty isn't really a thing in Dungeons and Dragons. It was not we... Pathfinder, and it was really nice. But I mean, technically, you know, technically, you can, crystal but... dragons in five e, but you still fucking threw those at us. Yeah, it's fun. Uh, no, the, the reason why I'm not too keen on taking 20 is because uh, I think to do it in Pathfinder, like taking 10 took 10 times as long. Times as long. Taking <laughs> 20 took like. Yeah. Let me, let me double check. Because I, I. Yeah, taking 10. Oof. I rolled so good, y'all. That's just a feels bad. Yeah, no, taking 20 means it takes 20 times as long. Mm -hmm. 
All right, well, so who's the 11 and who's the 7? Um, I gotta ask. Yeah, I'd say the 21's definitely the fiancé. All right. Um. Okay, this sounds bad, but the 7 and the 11 are probably the parents, because All right, ultimately well. they died the longest ago. All right, well, you're certainly no Batman. Don't give a fuck about your parents. I mean, I love them, but they died when we were, like, 10. It's like, well, a lot of shit's happened since then, you know? All right. I, I can always go back and redo it if I ever want to, you know? But it's fine for now. All right, put in, put in your notes that uh, your the uh, headstones to your parents don't look that great. Uh, I'm going to say... Uh, tell me, D4, which one has the shitty one? Dad has the shitty one. Oh. Um, so your father has a particularly not not great looking headstone. That's uh, really your unfortunate. Mother's, your mother's because, is acceptable. That's really unfortunate because I took my dad's name as one of my aliases. So I was like, oh, that that's sucks. Feels bad. <laughs> that's what feels bad. Um. Uh. And the other two. Uh. Your crewmates, right? Uh, I'd say 16 would probably be Takma. Hayden would be 15, assuming that I get no response from him. Um, I don't... Yeah, I don't think you get a response from... Would you get a response from Hayden? He I know I know that... Ship Druid? Yeah, he was a Ship Druid. Uh, but your biggest... like you, you tried him once, and then you didn't really mention him again. So do you want to keep trying for Hayden as well? I mean, yeah, I was playing trying for them both for like a week, and whatever happens, happens. Okay. Uh, in that case, you start off your uh, your break by uh, first beginning to work, do a little bit of work around the estate itself. Uh, first, you find a nice little clearing off in the distance, uh, inside of the woods, where it's it's discreet enough for not everybody to know about it, uh, and you set up a small pseudo uh, cemetery area. Um, in between you trying to get Erudite to contact uh, two of your companions, Felix and Hayden. Um, and while uh, you are doing a little bit of work on that, clearing a little bit of land, uh, you also uh, go out and have a, uh, a crystal, um, what is essentially a crystal um, statuette of um, Saren Ray's symbol. Um, which is, it's very delicate, but mm -hmm. uh, with the ceremony you then place upon it, it's, it, you find it to be a bit more sturdy, so you're less worried about anything damaging it. Um, unless it's something big and heavy. And does anything special happen when I'm, after I do the ceremony? Like, anything? Um, yeah, after, after you, you do the ceremony, since you would have done it at dawn in order to properly mm -hmm. uh, do it, it would catch, uh, catch the light very well and um, uh, put this nice... Um, rainbow of, uh, of light uh, across the water. Not all across it, of course. Yeah, but of course. It's fucking it'd be, huge. That'd it's, be... it's fucking huge. <laughs> fucking all of San Francisco showed up just to cast a rainbow over that pond. You know, I could like get my own like Statue of fucking Liberty, get that installed, like 25,000 gold. Don't know if that's a good idea. Uh, um, but basically, uh, to the east side of the pond now, on a, uh, on a kind of a stone plinth uh, with some steps leading up to it, um, uh, is the crystal shrine to Saren Ray. Uh, so you do have a location where you can properly pray to her now. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, with about the first week uh, having Erudite trying to contact uh, your friends for you, um, you would get a response for Felix. Um, and I'll just describe what Erudite hears, uh, and I'll basically say it to you like you are the one hearing it, because mm -hmm. I may as well. Um, and what she hears is, um, <sighs> shit. All right. All right. Good to hear. Uh, I'm a bit busy at the moment. I'll, all right. Nice. Good to hear. I'll contact you later. And that's all you hear from Felix. Hmm. Well, okay then. That is interesting. Um, if you were to judge it, judge what was happening, it sounds a bit like someone who is uh, in a physically exerting situation. 
I mean, I got a fighting impression, so. Um, next, uh, eventually you would get a form of contact from Hayden. Um, and all you would get from him is a very low whispered rasp of voice just going, busy at the moment. Wait, he's alive? I okay, well, that... It's good to hear. Oh my god, feel like... Okay. I can't talk now. Okay, well... Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you would hear this, the the familiar sounding voice of Hayden, and that'd be it. Uh, he mm-hmm. says he he says he says very simply, "Good to hear, busy, not right now." Like he is like for some reason he can't really talk. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, he's alive though. That means I wouldn't make, give him a headstone. All right, you scratch off the fifteen. Okay, that means I get five gold back. Yay. Oh my god, that's crazy. I did not think it'd be live. A. That's a conversation to have with my sister. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's alive. Does that mean Talkman's alive? Okay. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Mm-hmm. What else? Well, next up... Um... I'd imagine you'd start uh, doing the interviews for the estate. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Avro does give you a more or less a list of people you could potentially go for and like the rough prices that uh, they have. Uh, top of the list, as it is organized by price, um, is an elven guard, uh, well experienced, um, ex member of the, uh, of the uh, Echazian, yeah, Echazian military. Uh, by the name of Oriel Severin. Uh, spell uh, I, I will put it into the into the the thing. Don't worry. What could that mean? I, this means I can't like really retcon and say that one of the Paris is not shitty. What was that? Nah, never mind. No, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, yes. A A U R. E L I E S E V E R I N. Don't bother putting it into the uh, into the estate thing. I'm already doing it. Okay. Because uh, they're basically going to be the ones you guys get. Uh, for a groundskeeper, it's a man by the name of Richard Hickey. Mm-hmm. Um, a butler by the name of Milton Gifford. Uh, and God, the setup on this is really annoying. Why do some of them have? Oh, never mind. I hate it. Uh, and a uh, a maid slash head of household by the name of Esma Masson. Or technically, it'd be Mason, but it's got two S's, so Mason. So, uh, they are the highest paid ones and most recommended. Uh, and then there are a, a, a fair number of other reasonably priced guards that you can also contact who are five silver. And I'll give you names for them later on, but for the moment, they don't matter. Okay. Cole? Hello. Oh, sorry. Uh, where'd you go, man? I, apparently I muted myself accidentally. Well done. Thank you. I am a, I'm a genius. Anyway, but are we saying they just happened, or are we actually doing the interview? Oh, we're going to do the interviews. Okay. Dope, dope, dope. So who do you want to start with? Uh, let's start with Orly. Orly? Already. Uh, so uh, you would make your way into the um, 
the location where you're doing the interview, where, the, where you're doing the interviews, which could very easily be at the estate or could be at the Lucky Sapphire. It's up to you, really. Let's say the Sapphire. Okay. Uh, so it is at the Sapphire. Um, and you would see that sitting at one of the tables is a, um, a fairly uh, slender looking individual, um, about five, eight, um, um, kind of a, like a diamond shaped head, uh, black, mossy hair, um, uh, green eyes, uh, appears to be an elf. Uh, he is wearing, uh, what looks like chain mail with some padding on it. Um, and you believe that to be be... An elf, like the same way that Dawn appeared to be an elf? Uh, no, like he appears to be an elf. Okay. Just want to check. Uh, and, uh, do you, you believe that to be, uh, already? Can you type that, like, phonetically, since I'm gonna butcher the fuck out of that name? Already. Already. Okay. Actually, hold on, I'll... I'll... See? Oh, really. Oh, really. Okay. Dope. Okay. So, yes, Cal would walk up to the... So, you must be already. Uh, hello. Uh, yes. My name is already. Uh, already Severin. Uh, are you the uh, man looking for protection? Indeed, I am. Okay. Uh, I will say uh, up front, my prices is uh, I require two gold per week, and I would hope that um, accommodations are paid for. They would be. Okay. Uh, in that case, um, I previously served in the uh, military in Eches. Um, so for 48 years, and uh, I left honorably and decided to move here. Um, if you wish more details in my, um, in my service, or do you simply wish to discuss all your details? I would love to know more about your background. What right. role in the military did you serve? Um, I was a lieutenant. For a period period of time, well, until I left, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, in charge of a small battalion of men, um, and we saw very little in the way of conflict, uh, save for a few run-ins with uh, uh, so the uh, raiders and uh, bandits, um, occasional skirmishes with uh, dwarves. But uh, for the most part, it was fairly um, straightforward. Mostly, mostly raiders and bandits. Does this mean you're not as experienced as some of my other potential candidates? Uh, I am fairly experienced. You have to realize it was slow over a period of about 48 years. So still. Plenty of experience. Okay, question for all these interviews. Like, I don't necessarily want to in check, insight check if fucking everything. So can I do like just one insight check after the interview to like see if they're genuine or should I insight check things? I'm you can do an insight check right now. Okay, cool. Oh, I mean, it's not supposed to be advantage, but it's the same thing, so hey. That's impressive. Mm -hmm. Um, He does appear to be telling the truth. It's just he seems very casual about it and not too worried about how long it took because mm -hmm. it took 48 years and he's an elf. Okay. So how do you know Avro? Since I'm assuming Avro recommended him, right? Uh, yes, Avro did recommend okay. him. I uh, uh, simply... If I'm to be completely honest, I did not know him. I heard of him, but uh, I was uh, simply uh, looking for work, and I 
have been doing this for some time and I somebody mentioned to me that you were looking for say a god or a god captain and I offered my services but I do not know uh, Mr. Uh, Avril personally I'm gonna insight check that one okay Uh, he does not know him personally, but he does know of him. Okay, good. Just don't check that. Um, have you had any other guarding positions in this area, or are they only back in Echoes? Uh, I had a a few uh, a few guard positions uh, down in the town of uh, Warridge. Um, worked for the mayor for a period of time, and. Uh, I decided to leave as uh, the environment there was uh, not to my liking. How so? Yeah, I wish you'd come so go somewhere a bit a uh, bit colder. So I came here. I definitely didn't say check that because I want to make sure you don't stick with us. It doesn't get bored and leave. Oh fuck! I he seems super you know. trustworthy. Yeah, he's, he's just he's pretty trustworthy. Mm-hmm. I, I love mean, him. In fairness, Warridge. It's a warm place. So you're saying it gets cold during winter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what do I know about Warridge for my little time in Odela? Uh it it is definitely on the warmer end of the spectrum. Mm-hmm. Uh it's more uh like temperature wise think Florida. Mm-hmm. Well, like tip of Florida, I should say. Um but aside from that, unless you roll, you won't know anything. Yeah, I'm gonna say nah. If I've never been there, I probably wouldn't know much. You, you haven't been there. Yeah, so there you go. Um, and you left the mayor on good terms. Yes, I had I had no uh, problems with the mayor. Um, I simply decided to leave, and that was that. Okay, Connor, quick question, since... You know, I don't know how this is like. Would he have like recommendations? Yes, there, like he, he, like he, letters that he would produce, like yo. Basically, he you would have a small stack of things that he has as proof and recommendations, and yeah, he does have a letter of recommendation from a few other people, including the mayor. Yeah, and I haven't gone through them. Make sure they're all legit. Uh, they do appear. To, I'd say yes. They they do appear to be legitimate, and and the the one from the mayor is signed off as mayor Fadai. Uh, who, with a little bit of verification, you know, is indeed the current mayor of Orge. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> yeah, um... So, by all means, he does appear to be legitimate. Okay. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Um... Do you have any questions, sir? Not that I can think of at the moment, but you seem to be, you seem to come well recommended and seem to be good at your job. Why should I hire you beyond just having good names? I am good at what I do, and... I'm good at what I do, which is God. I do not waste time listening to gossip and other such things, and I always ensure that my men do the same. Well, that's good to hear. I am a God, and that is it. Well, there are a few things that, if you want this position, you must know going in. Whatever you hear on a state spoken amongst our party members must not leave the estate. If we find out that you or your men have been spreading word about our exploits when we do not wish to spread certain pieces of information, you will be severely punished. It was if I find such a man, if I if I find such a man in my employee has been spreading secrets, then it would be in my best interest to get rid of him. So, that is understood. Mm-hmm. 
Now, a, are these secrets, say, dangerous? Am I going to be hunted down and killed for knowing them? I do not believe so, but you know what they say, never say never. Very well. So no, no more dangerous than the mayor. Okay. Most likely. Awesome. In that case, I believe two gold should be more than enough. Mm -hmm. My price and will change if it does, if the situation does also change, of course. Of course. And if the situation changes, we will be more than happy to renegotiate your contract. Very well. In that case, I, I will, I am available for two gold per week. And that will be it. Well, I. You have been by far the best candidate so far, so I believe if you'll have us, we shall hire you. All right. Uh, in that case, when do I start? The first of winter. So, Very well. Since there's no like official like months, right? Uh, no, there are no there are no months because months are stupid. Okay. Yeah. The first of winter. Also because it takes effort to make more month names, and I'm not gonna fuck with that shit. Yeah, fair. Uh, Alright. In that case, I will begin in the first, the first of winter. I am assuming that uh, you will have other men uh, employed by this time? Uh, what I have? Yes. You're, you're, yeah. you're responsible for the, for the other men's employ as well. Mm -hmm. He does not come with his own entourage. Yeah, okay. Yes, I will be hiring the others as well. In that case, I will see you then forward to it. I think we'll get up and leave. Uh, and then uh, you'll move on to the next interviewee, uh, uh, Esma Masson, uh, who is the maid slash head of household. Uh, and with her, you would see uh, a halfling woman with um, brown, blonde, curly hair uh, kept in a bun. Uh, she appears to be wearing a dress at the moment, um, well kept, um, and uh, she looks like she's in her like late twenties. I mean, technically, so does Ro, but I feel like certain Ro is not in her late twenties. I don't know if Ro's in her late twenties. Let's see. Also, she's she's totally blonde. This lady is kind of a brownish blonde. Mm -hmm. like a, what is it, was it dirty blonde no no because dirty blonde is still blonde you mm -hmm. know what i mean yeah think think brown hair with blonde hair highlights there yeah. you go um <coughs> and uh you would see asthma and uh the interview will, be, will begin they uh Question, like, what do her documents and recommendations and all that shit say? Uh, they say that she worked as a maid and head of household uh, for a few, uh, a few, well, in this case, it would be just one, um, uh, just one household that was in Sursane. Um, uh, but the household then recently turned out to be uh, associated with the criminal, uh, the, cr the, the uh, crime What's the word I'm looking for? The crime syndicate, the Catan, uh, that runs the Copper District, and they got run out of town and arrested. So she lost her job. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, aside from the circumstances where she lost her job, there were no complaints about her in any way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. So you must be Esma, correct? Uh, yeah. Um... Uh, Esme Masson. It's nice to meet you, sir. It's nice to meet you as well. Uh, so, um, I heard you were looking for a, for a maid over for your, for your new estate, right? Indeed, I am. Uh, all right. Um, so, uh, I, I, I uh, I'm, I'm just, I'm looking, uh, I'm just, I'm just looking for, for a new place to work, you know, after, after they, you know, that whole situation. Yeah, I heard about that. That must have been awful. Um, yeah, it was it was interesting. Uh, guards had a lot of questions. Um, 
I, I didn't I didn't I didn't no, I didn't really know much of anything. I was just there to like clean the house and cook and do all that kind of stuff. But still, it was it was interesting. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, uh, I, I, you know, I, I didn't, didn't know anything, so I didn't really, didn't say anything. But, you know, I mean, I thought the Linvilles were all nice people, but, uh, it turned out they, they weren't. Mm -hmm. I mean, actually. But you didn't see her now to say good thing. I uh, feel like a good mate should be observant. And uh, no, I, I, the, I, I didn't, I didn't know as much of anything. Uh, and thieves can't, I want to say, are you being honest with me? Uh, she would respond in thieves can't. No, not entirely. That's what I thought. Want to hey, come claim? What was that? And can you think you're continuing in thieves can't? Yeah. You want to come claim? No, nah, it's just not a good idea to become a clean like that. The Ketons still run this town, so. Running my, running my mouth ain't the best option. Well, you're in luck, because that's a quality that I'm looking for. In a potential maid. You ain't working with the Keton, are you? Nope. Just the cloaks. Oh, okay. oh thank God. All right. That's not as bad, I suppose. Um. Uh, I'm good at cleaning, good at cooking, if you need me to. Um, I can do a bit of small uh, fixing, like carpentry and such, if you need me to. Um, um, good at mending plates and um, other such things that they do break, but, uh, you know, only, only if need be. So, uh, is, is there anything in particular you're looking for? I can try and tell you if I know if I can do it, but for the most part, I'm just just good at cleaning things. Making sure everything doesn't get messed up. Hmm. Well, that is what we're looking for, but my main two concerns are, one, is that your past connections to the Catan aren't going to come back and have consequences for me and my associates, will it? I can only hope so. You got to insight check that. She can only hope so. Okay. And the other is, is that me and my associates have come across interesting bits of information and have secrets of our own that we wish to protect. And we, if you were to get this position, you would not be allowed to spread any of this information beyond our walls and I have a feeling that, you know, strange for that, if you're keeping your mouth shut about the Catan. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not looking to cause no trouble. So I'm, I'm good. Just, just not saying much of anything. Okay. Specifically on that, can I like inside check to see if it's like, that's genuine or is like, if it, if pressed, she would sell us out. That's a tough thing to judge. <laughs> Cause in theory, Anybody would if you push them hard enough. Mm hmm. True. But just for a general, not immediately going to sell us out at the first chance they get. Let's go with that. Can I insight check for that at least? Sure. You could definitely give it a shot. And I'm Cal, so, you know, I get good insight usually. Yeah. Um, again, judging how someone would react to being under a huge amount of pressure, it's tough. You kind of just have to. They just have to be under that pressure and you see what happens. Mm -hmm. um, in the case of her, uh, she's certainly not lying about spreading, not wanting to spread secrets because it's not a good idea. Uh, so that's a good thing. But as to whether or not, you know, if someone put the nails to her and like, so I put the screws to her, mm -hmm. how, she, how she'd react, you don't know. Esmodee, I think that I am going to give you a chance. If we find out that 
you are spreading information about me or my friends, we will hunt you down. Keep that in mind. But I'm willing to put a measure of faith into you and I don't know. I have a good feeling about you. If, that, of course, you are okay with all of these terms. I'm fine with that. I, 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 I don't intend to cause them trouble, so I'm just gonna, you know, just gonna do my job and keep my trap shut. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, when would you like me to start? I, I, I can start as soon as possible if you, if you really want. Uh, let's start at the first of winter. All right then, uh, I'll 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 be there by the first of winter. Uh, uh, or my is uh, my yes. Uh, my... lodging will be provided oh, on right, the estate right. itself. Just just need to know because you know mm -hmm. there course. are some folks who are off from jobs and you have to get your own place. And... Mm -hmm. No, no, we are we have our own servants' quarters, and you are more than welcome to stay there. All right. Uh, in that case, I'll. I'll see y'all in the uh, first winter. Mm -hmm. And I will be sure to like inform everyone. I'll say after. This yeah, you, of, you yeah. can tell them in in the the chat. Yeah, and I will, but just like. Or just actually, tell, sure. tell them tell them in the public chat. It will be more fun. Yeah. Okay. Attractive. She's a halfling. Uh, so back back to the interview. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so that one comes and goes as intended. Uh, uh, next up is uh, Richard Hickey, the groundskeeper. The groundskeeper. Re I'm resisting every every urge to make him straight up groundskeeper Willie from The Simpsons. I'm resisting the the urge. Because uh, that'll be fun. Um, so, uh, you going for the going for the interview for Richard Hickey, uh, and you find uh, yourself looking at um, definitely not an attractive man. Uh, mm. He's he's kind of got like that kind of like oddly misshapen head that some guys get, where like it looks like they might have gotten punched at one point, or like maybe they're maybe that's just how it's shaped. You don't know. Um, he's got a very thick. Um, coat of um of a uh, uh, stubble like it looks like he if he shaved yesterday holy crap the guy must grow in a thick ass beard mm -hmm. um, he appears to be human uh mid-30s um but he just certainly doesn't look like a clean individual but then again for his job that's not shocking yeah and what do his papers say about him um Good groundskeeper. <laughs> That's more or less it. He, he was good at what he did. It's pretty straightforward. Um, uh, th there were a few complaints about um, his his demeanor towards people, and he did get fired from one job for throwing a trowel at someone who stepped in the wrong part of, of the garden. I love him already. Uh, okay. So... Um. <laughs> oh no, Jill! It's already ready to hit on her. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um. So uh, you see the man named Richard Hickey, uh, and he looks at you and goes, "Oh, hey there! Uh, you the man looking for a uh, new groundskeeper?" Indeed. All right, that's good to hear. Uh, names names Richard Hickey. You just call me Rick. Okay, Rick. 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 Yeah. Tell me about yourself. Uh, I'm good with plants. You know, I can make anything grow. You know. Just a green thumb or something magical? What? Man. No, man. I'm just, just good at growing plants. 
That's it. Don't I don't need no magic. It's cheap. I agree. Do you have an aversion to magic in general, or? Yeah, I don't give a shit. It's just, it's just, I don't give a shit. It's just cheating, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah, I can understand that. There's uh, something to be said for uh, good. the work that you put in with the sweat of your brow. All right, good to hear. In that, in that case, I got a few things I got to lay down on you. Uh, mm-hmm. When I when I do the gardening and like keep up all that stuff, I'll do what you tell me, but you better not fucking step on those flowers unless you want them to be like cold or something. But like, don't just don't fucking trample that shit. I won't fucking stand for that. All right, that ain't cool. We understand that completely, and my associates I are very interested in having multiple gardens, so we will do our best not to interfere uh, with any of the greenery. All right, are you, you going to make me grow any, like, weird shit? Or, like, is it just going to be, like, you know, peonies and crows and stuff like that? Um, I won't say no, but for the time being, I think we're just doing some of the basics. All right. Some vegetable works, garden, so right. some flowers, a all wild right. garden. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be telling you right now, I don't, I don't grow drugs, all right? I don't, I don't do that. You so, don't grow what? I don't grow drugs, all right? So no, none of that, like, you know, moe, none of that stuff. I don't do that. Unless you pay me more. Pay me more, then I'll do that. But still, I typically don't grow that. Mm-hmm. I'll keep that in mind. Well, but yeah, I, I do, I work about two gold a week. And, and I got my own tools, that too. Uh, but yeah, that's about it. Can I do a general insight check on just make sure he's been genuine so far? Sure. He's probably grow, dr- grown drugs at some point, but... Oh, yeah, I, I fully... As soon as I tell this to Rowan Gale, I fully expect them to be like, yo, here's some money, have him grow some drugs. Like, I fully expect this to be a thing, Connor. Okay. As soon as I tell the group this, they're gonna be like, grow drugs. Like, you saw uh, fucking Gale. Again, mention it in chat to see what yeah. happens. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, do you think you'll be hiring Mr. Hickey? Um, I still need to ask him some questions. All right. So, but first, let me put in the group. <laughs> okay. Because I, this is something that needs to be shared. Hickey is one of my favorites so far. Yeah, I love him. Cole loves him. And Connor is amused. Or Cal is amused. All right. So, so yeah. Rick. Okay. Yeah. What's up? Would our associates and I are, do a lot of traveling and come across pieces of information that aren't it's well, let's just say the public would be better off, you know, not knowing some of these pieces of information. Are you good at keeping your mouth shut? Well, I don't care what you guys got to talk about. May I insight check that? Sure. Yeah, I just want to double check. Where are these roles in like the actual game? Jesus Christ. I don't know. They just don't exist, to be honest. Uh, he, d- he doesn't really know why he should care. That's the attitude I'm looking for. Right, well, I find you to be a delight, Rick, and I'm willing to hire you on for the first of winter. Does that sound good to you? Lodgings would be provided. Yeah, all right. Not not much I can I can grow during winter, except for, you know, a couple of, uh, like, evergreens and stuff like that, but I can, mm. I can certainly try. Of course, you, got, like, just... a, you got, like, a greenhouse, something like that? Um... No official greenhouse yet, but in addition to growing or helping maintain our gardens, just general maintenance of the more tamed aspects of our property would be expected. All right. right. Uh, You you have to, you probably have to like set up a very 
special area. Uh, but I'm sure if like you did, I could probably like grow some like some of the, the tougher stuff that don't grow right unless it's in a, mm-hmm. a certain spot. I'm sure I could grow some like that, like some of the that that um, that um, big ass big ass garlic that grows up in like mountains and shit like that. I'm sure I could grow some <gasps> of that or other stuff. You'd have That's to find awesome. you'd have to find me some though. Mm-hmm. We will keep that in mind. Yeah. Have, and... you, have, you, have you ever seen that shit? It literally grows to be like the size of a fucking like one of those. What? It's not. Not an orange. It's the other thing that doesn't taste as good. Uh, yeah, that. Like they grow to be like that big, and they weigh like a fucking like five pounds. It's insane. I have not, but I'm actually in need of some. Would you know where to find some? Somewhere in the mountains, probably. Not so as you have any. No. On. Well, if you could potentially point us in the direction of some of them. Uh, we would be interested in growing some at our estate, as well as just generally acquiring some. Ah, uh, yeah, uh, he's probably probably somewhere in the mountain. I don't, I don't know where, where it grows, but like, yeah, uh, they grow in like high altitude. And if you want to grow somewhere that's not that, you got to trick it into thinking that it is that you you know. But it's it's you still got to get some of that stuff. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, right. So uh, I'm starting winter. Oh, uh, yes, yeah, the first of winter. All Audrey right. Would be provided. All right, I gotta go quit my other job right now. So I'll I'll, yeah. I'll see you then. All right then. <laughs> and he gets up and walks out. Okay, I love him. Just saying, Connor. I adore him. He's gonna be my new best friend. Michelle, cut out all the parts where someone's typing. Um, And next up is going to be Milton Gifford. Uh, That is the butler. Mm -hmm. Uh, And as you enter into the the bar to speak to one Milton Gifford, uh, you see a um, a uh, a graying uh, a man with graying hair. Um, uh, he's again one of those people. With, like they're definitely not unattractive, but like they're not. He's not a silver fox. He's just like he's an okay looking guy. Um, short cropped hair, graying. Uh, he's definitely got some uh, some signs of like aging to his face. Um, it doesn't look to be um, out of shape at all, uh, but you see he does have a uh, a well pressed and tailored suit that fits him quite well. Uh, what race is he? He appears to be human. Mm-hmm. Okay. And what do his papers say about him? Um, all, all around fairly good. Uh, there there was no incident of him being fired. It appears he uh, he left his last position fairly amicably. Um, and, um, yeah, that, that's about it. There's nothing, there's nothing too surprising or uh, anything that would raise any red flags, um, not without making a check. That is. I would. I mean, I would say I would do a little bit of, invest, of investigating before. Okay. You, you probably have to roll, like, maybe a history check to try and pull any information. I'm so good at that. Da, 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 da. I am super fucking smart. Damn. At least it's not a natural one. It's not a natural. You uh, you don't know. <laughs> you don't know much about anything about this guy. Mm-hmm. But his papers seem to be legit. Yeah, he. Nothing like he, he appeared. He appeared to do some pretty good work over with the Mestins, and no one, no, no red flag ever raised. Wait, he worked with the Mestins? Yes. Oh. That's interesting. It was it was a little while ago, like a few years. 
Okay. So you must be Milton. Yes, sir. Uh, it's nice to meet you. Uh, um, I'm sorry. Uh, Milton Gifford. Very nice to meet you. Keller on Shearwater, and I offer my hand to shake. You, you would shake your hand. So, you are interested in the butler position for my... Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm interested in the position. Um, I've got plenty of experience. I uh, worked, um, worked as a man for... Uh, but Sorry. Uh, I worked as somebody's right-hand man for a period of time. Um, did a lot of bottling for him. Um, all along, did a pretty good job, I think. Mm-hmm. And what all did you do for some of your previous employers? What, wait, what did you say? Uh, what all did you do for some of your previous employers? Uh, all sorts, really. Um, answered the door, cooked food, um, press shirts, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Occasionally I had to run errands like, you know, pick up groceries, uh, pick up clothes. Um, Get people out of jail. Stuff like that, you know? Get people out of jail? Yeah, like bail a brat out of out of jail for, you know, starting a fight or something like that. Kelly just, just sort of shit. nods, just like rich kid things, huh? Yes. That. So there's one name here in your papers that have I messed in. I swear I've heard of them before. Do you, what can you tell me about them? Uh, the who? The, the mess dude, I believe it was. Oh, yes. Uh, they, um, uh, head of the family was like some kind of a uh, mage type, and uh, they needed someone to uh, act as head of household and be uh, be available to help them out. And I did that for a period of time, and uh, I decided to leave. Why? Uh, I felt I wanted to change the scenery mostly. Rosenvale gets cold. It's 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 very high up on the mountains, and it gets very cold after a while. And I got I got pretty sick of it. Uh, can I insight check that? Sure. Just the whole why is he left? Hell, you fucking yeah! Uh, it definitely does <laughs> seem like most of the reason is because it's cold and he didn't like it. Okay. Um, he. You have a feeling that maybe there could have been something else that did it, like maybe like an off thing he just didn't like and it got under his nerves, but you don't think it's a big deal like he saw a murder or something like that. Like maybe someone just was annoying to him and he got tired of it, but it doesn't appear to be any groundbreaking secret. Mm-hmm. Well, their losses are potentially gain, I suppose. That's good to hear. Uh, so, is there anything in particular you're going to be needing me to do uh, when I work with you? Or? Um, before we get to that, all right. I want to know. Hang on, sorry. Long, um, long pause. Yeah, I'm thinking it's because it's like. Because it's like, on one hand, this is out of character. On one hand, I kind of want to press him for information about the Mestons, but at the same time, it's like, I can't expect <laughs> to press him for information and then have him also expect him to keep quiet about our business. Well, hold on. You could, you could do that, and if he does tell you information, you have your answer. Mm, true. That he doesn't keep secrets. Mm-hmm, true. You know... I've actually heard this rumor about the Mestons that they're devil worshippers. Is that true? It's a very interesting secret, sir. Haven't heard anything about it. Insight check that. Haven't heard anything about it. He does not appear to know what you're talking about. Also, I said secret. Probably should have said rumor. Mm-hmm. Correct myself. Yeah. 
Frank, to be to be honest, I'm pretty sure every rich family out there has got some kind of a room like that. <laughs> That's you know? true. I mean, hell, the mayor down in Woolridge is a he's a tea fling, so you know, of course, he's got all sorts of rumors like that around him. Mm-hmm. Not surprising. Okay, Don't you... really know much about it. But... Yeah. Are you prone to gossiping? No. It's interesting to hear. Don't really care much for it, though. Hmm. Well, one of my associates is interested potentially working with Mestins on a project. And there could be perhaps a bonus for you if you were to help us with any information about them. Would that be something you're interested in? See, the the issue with that is that um, if I do that for you, and word gets out that I did that, then less people are going to trust me around there. And while I'm sure I'm going to be working for you for a long time, the problem is if I'm not, then I've just gone and shot myself in the foot, haven't I? Mm -hmm. A man of integrity. That is something that I would definitely look for in a potential staff. So that is good to hear. Well, thank you very much. I do appreciate that. So then that means that in, you understand that anything you hear within our walls that might be sensitive information. It's all hush, hush, yep. Of course. Don't worry. Believe me, I've been in plenty of rich households. Totally fine with it. Then... I think yep. we'll hire you. Accommodate, there are accommodations to live in at the estate. All right. You would be starting at the first of winter. All right. It should be fucking cold, but fine. Works for me. Mm -hmm. I look forward to having you in our employ. Oh, thank you very much. I do appreciate. I uh, do look forward to working with you. Well, actually, hold on. I do need to check with my associates on one thing. But All expect right. to hear back from me within a few days. All right. I. I I'm gonna, you're going to run it by the rest of the team that he knows yeah. that he may know things and he's not saying anything. Oh, that's more that he worked with the Mestons, and I don't know if Rudy would necessarily be comfortable with that. And it's like. He not, not, not he won't necessarily say anything, but even then, I wouldn't want to like pick a fight at that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so so yeah. while you're doing that, uh, we'll say he is kind of up up in the air, but mm -hmm. we will move on uh, towards the rest of the things that you want to do. So uh, you did your interviews. Uh, you did the other things around the house. Um, mm -hmm. So here's the question. Uh, would you like to move on to uh, trying to do some training at the temple? Uh, yeah, let me just finish sending this message to the group chat real quick. Okay. Michelle, cut out the long periods of silence and typing. 
but they're just so interesting. All right. So moving on. Yeah. Um, you find yourself making your way over to uh, the temple to Saren Ray. Uh, that is inside of uh, inside of Odella. Um, <laughs> um, and um, I'd imagine you'd first be speaking to. All right, even day or odd day. Um. Da, 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 da. Uh, even. Even. All yeah. right. In that case, you'd find yourself speaking to Miss Imogen for uh, Imogen for <coughs> uh, the High Priestess of Seren right here. Uh, you see her quite a bit uh, leading uh, ceremonies and uh, actually leading, say, you know, processions and stuff like that. And actual, um, uh, what is the thing when you follow, when you group, group up in church and I can't think of the name? You can tell I'm not a religious man. Uh, like a mass kind of thing? Mass, that's it. That's the word. Um. Yeah, you see her like leading mass and doing stuff like that. Uh, mm -hmm. And she is the woman that you spoke to. Uh, you spoke to quite a bit about uh, the whole uh, Saren Ray thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, when she is available after she's she's done with her uh, her little mass and um, uh, has finished uh, speaking with other individuals, uh, you manage to pull her aside and, uh, well, what do you do? Um, is this like after I've been dealing with all this, like estate stuff? One would yes. assume. Yeah, more or less. Okay. So at that point, um, I'd say I'd probably just start with general asking about the temple. Uh, so and it's Imogen Ford, right? Imogen, yes. Or High Priestess Ford. Uh, Hi, Priestess Ford. Uh, thank you for your time. What, how have you been? I've been doing well. Uh, you know you don't have to be calling me High Priestess uh, Ford. That's only for more... Uh, uh, hoity-toity situations. You can just call me Imogen. Right. Imogen. So, what can I say? Um, uh, you looking to talk about something? Um, yes, I... <laughs> Do you love that answer? It was cold, so I left. Um... Cal would go. I. I wish to. Learn, we're sort of in a. My group sort of in a waiting period where. We're sort of just trying to, pass some time before, some, resources we have get available, and I. I really wanted to spend this time potentially learning more about my powers and trying to get stronger, learn how to fight. I mean, how much do you know? Like, whenever I talk with either you, what's uh, the other person's name? Uh, it's it's Imogen, uh, Imogen Ford and uh, Liren and Fiend. I don't think you've spoken to her. I spoke to Liren once. But I think I've spoken to Imogen every other time. Yeah. Like, whenever I talk to you, Lyron, I feel like you always know my business, and so, like, what do you know? I know a fair amount. Most of it's just from reading you, kid. You're, uh, you tend to wear your emotions on your sleeve, and it's, it's pretty easy to pick up on. But still, um... At that, Cal just sort of raises an eyebrow. It's like, but to be for, fair, as only... for the whole uh, 
what I know about the powers thing. I, I'm just a priestess. I'm here for the people to talk to and to lead them in mass and to do that whole thing. Liaren, though, she's a bit more, um, she's, she's a bit more knowledgeable on the whole, um, fighting front. I've never been one for, say, uh, flinging spells and hitting people with maces. I do know plenty of things, though. That just comes with age, but mm -hmm. I still know plenty. Uh, could I potentially talk to Lyran today, or would I have to come back tomorrow? You probably have to come back, Doctor, tomorrow. She she shows up on the odd days. I show up on the even days. One day I'll memorize her schedule. You know, just show up the other day and you'll find her. <laughs> I mean, right. assuming you see me the other one. I mean, I, I mean, how much do you know about like the gods and everything? I can tell you plenty about Saren, right? And I know a fair amount about the others, but they're not my, you know, I can't recite the scripture and so on and so forth. I just know stuff about him. So what are you looking to know? I'm sure there's some. Well, are we in her back office or? Uh, you're you're still you're still in the like the main temple, but it's 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 quieted down, and most of the people there are in like in prayer, like and that's like five people. Okay. Um. Well, what do you know about Phrasma? I know she's in a, uh, she's an unhappy necessity. And a happy one, to be fair. She's in charge of life and death and everything in between. And unfortunately, it just means that when people go away, she winds up catching most of the blame. It's unfortunate, but someone's got to catch it. Mm -hmm. As a goddess of death, you know, Saren Ray sort of also represents life. Is there any conflict there? Saren Ray represents life, not life. There's a difference. And no, there ain't no conflict of interest. Phrasma just does what she's supposed to do. She lets people live and she lets people die, but it's a necessity. It's got to happen. Eventually, it's got to. Uh, oh. But there's nothing, there's no bad blood between the two. There's none that I, that I know of. Well, that's good, because apparently she is reaching out to one of my friends. And... Apparently, she has plans for him, as well as myself and everyone else in my group. And that means that there's now two goddesses who have plans for me. Uh, I would like to know why. I'm not terribly surprised by that. Of course, the Lady of Fate has plans for you. Or at least knows the plans for you. What is that supposed to mean? No. Erasmus called the Keeper of Fate. She literally is, I mean, as far as I know, in charge of what happens. She's got to make sure it happens the right way, that the right things happen for the right reasons, and that eventually everybody finds the end that they're supposed to have. I can understand that, but do you know anything about the plans that she and my guess Sanray have? Of course I don't, I don't know the plans the gods have. Or gods. And uh, the plan as for what Verasm has got ready for you, she you gotta realize I mean I in fairness, I don't know the whole spiel about fate and that 
stuff. But fate can be, sure, fate can be something big. It can also be something small. You're fated to go home and go to sleep. And then you're fated to wake back up. It's going to happen. You know it is. Also, someone could have just been fucking with you. You don't know whether or not they actually, whether or not she's actually got plans. I don't know. This, the individual they were talking to, new things, not necessarily available to the public. And, well, the last time that happened, I was talking to you, or Lyran. Huh. Scared. Makes me think that perhaps she does have a hand on this. Oh no. Oh well. If she does, you won't really be able to stop it. Probably. I don't necessarily. I don't think I could stop. I don't think I'm anywhere near that powerful. But <sighs> that's good. Um, Nor am I. Ready for it. <sighs> maybe it will. Maybe it won't. Who knows? <sighs> Sorry, kid. My back's killing me. I gotta sit down for a minute. Of course. Um, I guess since I need to talk to <clears throat> Lyran anyway, is there anything I can do to help around the temple today? Nah, you could certainly help, help yourself by doing a bit of reading. I mean, certainly wouldn't hurt you, kid. Um, but still, there's, is there anything I can try to answer for you about Saren Ray? I mean, you're kind of asking me stuff I don't necessarily know much about. I mean, I know a bit about it, but not a huge amount. I guess... I guess my biggest question is... When I first started believing in Saiyan Ray, you know, it was this whole thing, you know... To work for your redemption, but yep. now that I walk this path, I don't necessarily know what the end goal really looks like. Uh, see, kid, that's actually really tough to answer. Because the problem is that end goal don't look the same for everybody. And to be honest, you probably won't know what it looks like until you finally see it. You just keep working towards something. Whatever that something may be. You know. Who knows? Well, I'm trying. I just hope that it's enough. You'd be surprised. Sometimes just giving a shit can be enough. Trying is a heck of a lot more impressive, though. I'm sure you're doing fine, kid. You haven't been arrested yet. At least I don't think you have. And you haven't been hung, hung from the neck till dead, so I think you're doing fine at the moment. But they could always be doing better. You can. Everybody can. That's just how it is. Well... guess then if you have some reading materials I guess I could peruse those I'm sure you got a, I'm sure I got a couple you can look through uh, probably uh, probably in my back room I can go grab you one of the books you can start reading through it all right all right cool wait actually yeah Fly out. You know how a couple seasons ago I asked you about how my one friend who you know, apparently was the result of like a demon deal or something? Yeah, what about him? Well, just curious. What do you know about a demo damned? Hmm. The name certainly, uh... The name certainly is tickling in the back of my brain. I'm sure I've heard it somewhere, but I can't rightly place it at this moment in time. 
certainly don't sound good. Wait, from what little I've heard about it, it doesn't sound fun. Hmm. Well, can't remember what it is for the moment, but whatever it is, you should probably stay away from it. I mean, or at least not try to fight it. Who knows? Wouldn't dream of it. Hmm. Sure you wouldn't. I mean, not immediately. Anyway. Thought so. But let me go get that book for you. And uh, when you when you talk to Liren, um, did she's a she could be a bit much at times. All right. Who? Liren. Okay. You didn't talk to her much that long, did you? No, I. Yeah, she can, here on she can be a bit much. Okay. Let me go get that book for you. Come back tomorrow. Okay. And she would go off and grab the book, and uh, I'm assuming you would start reading it. Mm-hmm. Uh, more or less, it is, is, a, is a form of scriptures uh, in regards to Sarah and Ray. Um, and it does it does go into detail on what uh, she stands for, and it is it is uh, it is what you would know of. She is a goddess of light, healing, and redemption. Um, and uh, it more or less the the healing and redemption portions of it are kind of one and the same. Um, you you heal someone's body physically by fixing them for mm-hmm. medicine. You stitch them up. You cast a spell on them. Um, you heal someone's mind and soul by redeeming them. And they're both seen as necessities. Mm-hmm. You have you have to do you have to do both of them. You have to try to do both of them at least. Mm-hmm. Um, and the other side of the coin that is redemption uh, is uh, destruction. As if you have to, and you can't redeem someone properly, you have to get rid of them. As at least if they are dangerous enough. Mm-hmm. You know your garden variety pickpocket, maybe not, but when you know, you 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 like basically it, it goes into detail about how sometimes the feeling you get about how dangerous someone really is can be your best, your best guide. Like cultists and people who make deals with demons, essentially? Potentially, yes. Cool. It's more so that what you, you'll, mm-hmm. you'll get a feeling. When you, yeah. When you, when you think it's probably for the best that this person stops existing, that's like that's that's Connor talking to you. Like, yeah. Sometimes trust your gut. Yeah. But um, uh, it also emphasizes that you should probably it, learning to judge someone fairly is the best option, and sometimes the best way to do that is to know more about them, understand why they are the way they are. Mm-hmm. And by understanding more, you can find out whether or not someone is able to be redeemed, or if they have to be destroyed. Now, are you going to go talk to Liren? Mm-hmm. Alrighty. So, <sighs> you uh, go back to the temple the next day. Um, and uh, you note that there are there are less people in the temple today. Um, there are certainly certainly still some people, but there, aren't, there are not as many as there were last time. Um, and you you don't have to wait as long as you did had to with with Imogen um, for later in the So you're the individual that Imogen mentioned to me, correct? Probably. <laughs> ah, good to hear. So I heard you were looking for in- information on fighting. Uh, okay. yes. So, tell me, what are you looking for in a sec? I want to be 
strong enough to be able to protect my friends and the people I care about. And I want to be able to understand my powers a bit more. And what have you done to make that happen? I came here to talk to you. Have you prayed? Have you spoken to Our Lady? Have you uh, yeah. begun using her favored weapon? Have you memorized the scriptures yet? I mean, I started reading them last night. Mm -hmm. Need more. And I've used a scimitar like once when I was younger, but not recently. You should practice. It's oh, okay. very important to be able to. It's very important to be able to emulate what she likes. And those are her weapon of choice. So you should always carry one with you. Okay. I think we have some spare scimitars at the estate. I can get one of those. Excellent. You should practice. I will do so. Now, uh, is there, there, you also curious about like uh, your powers and stuff like that? So I sort of have just been making up everything on the go, and I feel like I don't know, I feel like you have you guys have such a better handle on things, and it's like what if I need to do something to help someone, or like one of my friends, and I don't know what to do because it just sort of hasn't really come up before. And it's like, I don't... What do you mean? What do you mean, what if you don't understand what there is to do? I mean, it's like, I am aware of, like, I know some magic, but it's like, you know, like, is that all of them? Or I just, I don't understand them, really. It's like, why do I have the powers? Because she How wants do you to have the powers. Because she believes that you can bring light to this world and bring redemption to the people that deserve it. She thinks that you are worthy of her abilities, of her gift. Okay, I guess. But if you're, if you're curious about, you know, the whole spell casting and that stuff. Um, well, I don't know. Um, you'll understand when to use your magic. When someone's hurt, you heal them, you know. Mm -hmm. Just but, like, you know, magic. It's like this, oh, look, haha, they've got, you know, people have magic, and then, you know, one day I had it, and it's like, it, it changes things. I mean, Understandable. How how sudden was it for you? I mean, this magic? how much do you know about how I got my powers? Hmm. Yeah. All right. So yeah. I guess after you know Felix gave me his holy symbol, and then you know I prayed a few times and. I had this really weird dream, and then one, you know, a couple days later, this dude was pissing me off, and the next thing I know, this, you know, blast of light came out of my hands and scorched part of the ship, and I was like, oh, God. Okay, in that case, that makes sense. You were showing faith. You believed in her. And she started to give you that in return, and she must have seen something in you. She doesn't just give it to everybody. What did she see in me? Who knows? Potential, probably. Saw that maybe you could do something good. Or, do, or start to do good, or something of those sorts. Or you could be useful. But, still. Fuck off, Craig. No, oh, dude, Craig was like, yo. Yeah. I haven't heard a thing. Oh. Yeah, it was. It's it's the backup. Mm. Stupid piece of shit. But and 
has she asked you to do anything in particular or have did Imogen did Imogen mention something to you? I mean, Sarah herself said that you know need to hunt down some like fiendy constructy things, but Oh well there you go. It's as Im- simple as that. What why? What would Imogen have said? I don't know. She figures things out faster than I do. I don't get that. But still, it's as simple as that. She wants you to be her blade. She wants you to start making the world better and safer. I was pirate. I, that's a lot to ask for someone who was a pirate. And I... I I, that, I I just don't know anything about religion or gods, really. And it's like, I, why me? I just don't, I just don't <sighs> understand. Keep asking that question. I don't know. Again, she probably saw something in you. You'll just have to accept that... Maybe one day you'll know the reason. Maybe you never will. Who knows? Our lady makes decisions that, well, you won't necessarily always understand. But that's not a bad thing. See, the big thing is you just got to try. Something, anything. been doing that lately or at least trying to so she just she said just to destroy like demons and stuff I, it was a long time ago I was more sort of old man was kind of processing the fact that like does Saren Ray get bored is that why she feels like she's always watching me I don't know Maybe, but then again, probably not. Now, if you can't destroy like demons and things, why don't you destroy uh, the things that they make? Demons make things? Everybody makes things. Like, I mean like, like magic items, bad things though. Uh, if I come across them, I will. Well, there you go. That? That's what you should start doing. Start doing things like that. And well, if you really want to, you can start searching for them. I do have this weird kind of spell that lets me search for magic items. But there you do you go. know of any, like, cursed ones, I guess? Off the top of my head, no. But, but... If you can do something like that, I've got a feeling that's what she wants you to do. So, what you and I are going to be doing now is we're going to be looking through books. Oh, joyous. <laughs> books are fun. And we are going to be looking for stuff that shouldn't be, be around anymore. Yay. Good to hear you're excited. Let's get to work. And that... <laughs> Turns out to be most of your training with, uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> with her, as um, yeah, Liren. The conversation you had with her last time was very brief. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, she's kind of an eccentric woman. I like her. She's fun. Cal's she's, like, oh god, she's, she's interesting. She is uh, a bit much. Uh, but basically, um, the rest of your training with Liren. Is more going uh, is more trying to find out things that you can f- more or less search and destroy. Mm-hmm. Um, it does involve finding some uh, very old books that are a bit dangerous, and I will go into detail on them a little later uh, mm-hmm. over direct messages. Yeah, um, as then you could write it down and put it into your notebook. Mm-hmm. But I will give you uh, a few objects you could potentially keep an eye out for or start searching for to Mm -hmm. uh, get rid of. And I will point out uh, the the tattoo on your back. 
uh, it has reduced in size a fair amount. Mm -hmm. It's about maybe half the size it was last time. And that's about where it stays until the beginning of summer. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Uh, do you have any questions? Uh, it doesn't look like my old tattoo is coming back, or is it like it's no, just gone. Okay. That's gone. Well, lovely. Uh, okay, I guess I did get proficiency in scimitars. Then uh, you would gain proficiency in scimitars uh, with a lot of practice by yourself and not a lot mm. of practice with Liren. As yeah, she's got shit to do. Well, she's more a uh, more. She more tries to get you to read books and find more information mm -hmm. that she does teach you how to use the swords. You just wind up teaching yourself that. Yeah. And, uh, man, she's a lot to do with. But, um, I will give you a list of things that you could try to keep an eye out for. Mm -hmm. Um, a few of them are very clearly like things like, like, like in, in the books that you read with Liren, a few of them are clearly like, Things that if you ever find them, you found yourself in a very, very strange circumstance or mm -hmm. you're in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. Like there is something that's rumored to exist in the hells. Yeah. And well, if you're there, something's, something's happened. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are a few that are, are like that could have existed or, or were rumored to have caused trouble in certain areas or were tied to certain problems. That again, I will send you via message. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah. we got to wrap this up as this one's running on a bit, running on a bit long. Yeah. Okay. Uh, also, can you like message me all like all like the scimitar weird maneuver things? Uh, sure. I'm sure I could do that. Cool. Uh, beyond that, I don't really have any questions. If I do, I will send you a message. All right. Uh. Ooh, I'm tired. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, at the end of it, I guess, I'd say, like, I guess this was probably partially on Cal, but would, like, do Cal bond with, like, the two high cleric priest people? And it's like, uh, is the this, high... like, uplifting for Cal? Kind Boy, of the high or... priestess is a lot easier to bond with. <laughs> yeah, I got that. Um, Liren... She's not a bad lady. Mm -hmm. um, she's definitely eccentric. Mm -hmm. She can be a bit overzealous at times, uh, but ultimately, she she's she, her heart is in the right place. Mm -hmm. It's just in the right place a bit aggressively. Yes, I gathered. So, yeah, I'd say if you, if you think he could get along with her, sure. Okay. Um, can I? I'll say that Cal took this time and he is feeling more confident and comfortable in things. All right. Good to hear. Uh, but yeah, you find, you find uh, Imogen to be a much more comforting figure. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, do you have any other questions I can try to answer for you? Uh, not at this exact moment. All right. All right. Uh, Donka. In that case, I believe we can wrap that one up. So, Jill. Yes. Um, what do you think that Ro is going to do during the time skip? Well, this can be pretty pretty yeah. on, of course. Explain. Um, in order to attract the attention of uh, a, a Mr. Sheriff Mercy guy. Okay. Rose gonna break into some houses, not like break in, but like uh, doors that are left unlocked, sneak in. All right. Uh, rearrange the furniture just completely. Make okay. everything look everything look a little bit more fashionable, a little better. Um, leave a note with her 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 new secret identity. Okay. <laughs> and, and and wait till the trail leads to her. You know. Got it. Uh, all right. Uh, and I'm guessing on the side. As you go from town to town, committing petty crimes to attract the attention of the sheriff, uh, you'll be doing work as a bard as well, correct? Um, absolutely. Got to get that cash somehow. <clears throat> All it. right. In that case, uh, let me quickly look at your sheet. Because I'm pretty sure you're trained in performance, but I just want to make sure. 
Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. So what I want you to do is just roll uh, performance three times, and mm-hmm. we will that will dictate how much money you make. Okay, performance. Performance. Okay, one, two, three. Ew. Oh damn! Ew. It's a natural twenty. <laughs> That's uh, a badass roll. Let me do the math. <laughs> uh, so uh, modest. Uh, let's see, it's modest, comfortable, and then very okay. comfortable. Okay, so this can be. All right. So as an overview, uh, for the first. Uh, the first, uh, the last couple of days of fall, you make about 25 gold. Hell yeah. Not great, but it's something. <laughs> it's money, uh, though. <laughs> next season, uh, come winter, uh, you manage to make about 180 gold. Ooh. Uh, and then, uh, spring heading into summer, uh, you manage to make, uh, instead about 205 gold. Hey, I'll take that. Then, uh, and then, so you, in total, you make four ten over the over the break. Okay, I was adding it as I was being told. So, gotcha. Uh, so there you go. You know how much money you've made. Mm-hmm. Um, and and this is more out of my curiosity. Is there anything that Roe wants to get added into uh, the estate? I was thinking about it, and I. Uh-huh. I don't know because like everyone was talking about like the training room or whatever, or, like a shooting range. Oh, there's but... a shooting range. <laughs> there's there's gotta gonna... be a shooting range for you. Because I was gonna say, it's even if there wasn't a shooting range, okay. Ro would make a shooting range. AKA, she's gonna go shoot some fucking trees, dude. <laughs> yeah. oh. Gail, Gail probably wouldn't be happy about it, but sure I gotta live my life. <laughs> gotcha. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that in that case, uh, there there is a shooting range for you, fortunately. Um, mm-hmm. It, w- it would be made uh, a little ways in uh, towards like the end of fall, the beginning of the winter. Um, mm-hmm. That's about the time when uh, Mercy um, really starts making stuff that actually winds up showing up in the house itself. Because she's she know you would know that she's doing some side work uh, in a carpentry store. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the men at work carpenters, <laughs> and uh, uh, quite a bit of the stuff that she winds up making either gets sold or she buys and brings to the house so you've got a fair number of targets to uh to be practicing with but um so you uh miss Rowe, uh go about attracting the attention of one sheriff chris mercy by going to small towns that don't necessarily have guards and committing a spree of serial refurnishings absolutely rearrangings i should say <laughs> and you do so and leave a note behind in each of the house with the moniker <laughs> <laughs> you're fucking kidding me <laughs> it's quality content car uh-huh yeah uh the moniker of would you be so kind as to say it please martha stewart <laughs> brilliant it's the me. moniker of Martha Stewart. That's my lifestyle. <laughs> and it works because isn't Martha Stewart like 100% into like getting high now? Oh, she she straight up got arrested. Oh, no. Not a great role no, model. No, she, it, was, it, was, it was for tax evasion, actually. Okay. So not a bad role model. Not no. an awesome one. She's she's more... She, I think she's actually technically a fel- felony. <laughs> a, a, a felon. But... Um, so you go about performing the series of break-ins uh, under the pseudonym Martha Stewart, uh, performing all the way to uh, pay your way. And eventually, uh, you finally uh, see in one of the newspapers in one of the towns, um, <laughs> Martha Stewart strikes again on the headline of one of the newspapers. And I'm going to imagine Moreau <laughs> immediately sees this, folds it up, and pockets it. Oh, because... absolutely. <laughs> That's going on That's some awesome. sort of like vision board. Oh hell yeah! <laughs> um, and after doing a bit of searching, eventually, at one of the recent crime scenes uh, in the town of Penshaw, uh, you find uh, a familiar face. Uh, one Sheriff Chris Mercy. Um, 
wearing his uh, purple clothing uh, with that light, uh, that light, uh, uh, the small like light steel um, pads on his like elbows and knees and uh, uh, and his boots, uh, and you recognize the the familiar gunslinger. <laughs> What do you do? I feel like Ro would sidle up next to him if he was like investigating. Uh, at this point, they don't know that it's Ro. No. But she'd be like, you know, I never thought I would resort to petty crime to try to find somebody, and yet here I am. <laughs> uh, hello there, Miss uh, Miss Ro. Uh, you're the Saw you back in Belmere, right? Yep. And uh, af- after that little incident there, I noticed, you know, you have a you have one of these. And she's going to pull out her gun. <laughs> You're right, I do. I made it myself. What, what did you just say? Don't worry about that. It's in the past now. What's right. important <laughs> is that I need to know how to use this because right now I have no idea. And that's not a safe thing for I don't think anybody uh, I'm inclined to agree now let's get back to the matter did you just did you just say that you're committing petty crimes to get my attention okay so I don't think what I was doing was technically illegal I am however pretty well known now I think this is my that maybe not my first time on the front page of a newspaper but you know I'm getting there you're Martha Stewart. I'm Martha Stewart. <laughs> well, technically, I should arrest you. Mm-hmm. I won't lie, this is probably one of the most entertaining cases I've had to work in a while. Um, now, you did this all just so you could get me to teach you how to use a gun? Yeah. yeah. I didn't know how to reach you like a normal person. So... So you did this. Yeah, I really do think I have a, a slight future in interior design. I never thought about it before, but... Oh, boy. All right. <laughs> uh, all right. So, um... All right. So, how about this? Let's make mm-hmm. a deal, you and I. All right. Um, if you promise to stop walking down to people's houses and rearranging the furniture... I'll teach you how to use the gun. All right. (laughs) Jill, (laughs) you get you kind of cut you kind of cut out there a bit. Did I? Okay. Yes, unfortunately. My thingamajig is it was all red, but Rose's gonna put her uh, fingers, cross her fingers behind her back, and say, "I absolutely promise that I will stop doing that." Just, just roll me a deception for the sake of it. It's not going to change anything, but it, it'll be funny. <laughs> uh, all right, Mercy. Let's see what you can do. Because um, I know I've got your sheet right here. Nope. All right, he believes you. <laughs> Rose never lied a day in her life. Uh, sure. Let's, let's go with that. Uh, so... Uh, Sheriff Mercy looks at him and goes, All right, then. Um, you got a place where we can we can practice this, or you just looking to shoot a tree or something? Um, I mean, technically, we have a place. It's, it's not here. Um, but. I'm going to have to take can a day off to do this. Yes, but can I. Can I add something to our deal? Uh, do you my, have any? Do you, do you have any sheriff badges I could have? Can I have one? You probably have a lot. Do you lose I've, them? I've, <laughs> I've, I've, I've got a deputy badge. I can probably give, give yeah. you. It. Yeah. All right. No, I'll take that. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, lead the way to wherever we're supposed to go. Where is this place? Where is the estate? Listen, I listen it's, about... It, it's about a mile a mile or two out of Sersane. Actually, okay. it's a mile. It's a mile. A mile out of Sersane? Oh, hell. 
Actually, no, it'd be, it'd be two miles because it's actually a really big place. It's two miles out. We'll, I'll, I'll settle on that finally. Okay, two miles out. Got it. Uh -huh. All right. Uh, all right, fine. Let's let's go, and I'll show you how to use a gun. And don't don't mess around with the damn thing. All right. <laughs> It's funny that you say that because literally I was imagining Ro like pulling the gun out and shooting up the sky like some sort no, of no. hillbilly. <laughs> She's a tiny little hillbilly and I love her. <sighs> Jesus. Uh, and after a few days of travel, uh, you and Sheriff Mercy wind up back at the uh, the estate, which after your crime spree and after uh, <laughs> and after the days of travel you had to do. Um, uh, would probably be it'd probably be in winter by this point. And you probably would actually see uh, some of the staff now. Oh, ho, ho. Um, you note there is the there is the guard captain uh, mm -hmm. whose name would would Ro give a shit about their names? I mean, he was he was a hot one, wasn't he? He was like uh, good looking. Uh, the the head the head guard uh, already Severin. Uh, uh, he he's a fairly good looking fella. Yeah, if they're attractive, Rose gonna ask their name. All right, in that case, <laughs> uh, you would know the names of Arlie Severin, mm -hmm. uh, who is the head guard. You would know the names of uh, Esma Masson, uh, mm -hmm. who is the maid, uh, and is a halfling. Hell with, yeah! Uh, she, well, she's a she's a halfling with um, uh, brown hair with uh, blonde highlights, uh, curly, kept in a bun. Um, yes. <laughs> uh, I, for, for just because I know you. Uh, mm -hmm. There's also Milton Gifford, who is the butler. He's an older yeah. fella, uh, forty to fifty, um, graying. Uh, like it, it's kind of getting to like the salt and pepper stage. Uh, he's Hell definitely yeah. got like worry lines and um, and wrinkles and stuff like that. Like he he looks like an, an older man. He certainly isn't unattractive, but he's not a good looking man. And then there's the groundskeeper, uh, <laughs> who's not a, not an attractive man <laughs> by any mean. Uh, oh. Like. The fellow looks like he got hit with the ugly stick and lost. Uh, yeah, that's with the, that that's... being said, uh, mm -hmm. that was the fellow that uh, that uh, Calaron would have told you um, would be willing to uh, potentially grow not entirely legal oh, yeah. substances, provided mm -hmm. that you paid him a bit more. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. So I mean, I mean. Ro wouldn't know if anyone's already tried to pay him, so, like, she's definitely gonna approach. <laughs> <laughs> we'll handle that at the end. Okay, because, <laughs> listen, Ro knows what she's about. <laughs> I, I figured, I figured. But, um, Sheriff Mercy uh, would uh, go about showing you how to properly use the gun, and it all begins with something very simple. Mm-hmm. Keeping your fuck, you're keeping your damn hand off the trigger, unless you're absolutely sure you're gonna shoot somebody. Okay, but counterpoint. What if I want to shoot somebody, but my finger's not already on the trigger, and then I'm too slow? That's different. Uh, the, okay, see, what you do is instead of having your finger on the trigger, you have your finger just just outside of it. Like, you just extend your finger a bit. So that it's not inside the guard. It takes all of a few, not even a second, to just slip your finger back in there and pull the trigger. But I'd rather that you not have your finger there and not shoot somebody than have your finger there and accidentally shoot somebody. Right, 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 right. All right. I feel like okay, also this is very eat. small, but I feel like Ro holds her gun with her pinky out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just thought of that. I was imagining her holding you're it. Al you're also going to have to stop doing that. Uh, that's... That's probably going to make it kick back a bit more. <laughs> we'll see about that one. Nope, probably. I'm pretty sure about that one. <laughs> she would very uh, begrudgingly put the pinky down because apparently no one has fucking manners. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, so I'm going to want you to try and take a shot at that target down there. Okay. All right. Right, I'm bound to be effortlessly good at this, like I am most things. So. All right. <laughs> oh God. Do I do the thing? Do I click the thing? Yes, you click. You click the firearm button. Oh God. You click the gun button. I click the gun button. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. 
Hello. <laughs> you, uh, you uh, very carefully pull out the pistol. You aim down the sights. Uh, you have your pinky out for a second there, and you go, wait. You told me not to do that. So you put your pinky back onto the handle. Of course. Pull the trigger, and you watch as it um, splinters right through the wooden target that you have set up. Uh, about, about uh, I think the range of that, yes, 30. About 30 feet away. Uh, it's not a bullseye, but it's damn close. Hey, <laughs> All right, that wasn't too bad. Uh, now, you're going to have to keep working on that. Uh, I'd recommend and you buy a heck of a lot of bullets and a whole lot of powder because you're probably going to have to go through quite a bit. Uh, and I'm going to want you to keep working on that for, let's say, the next eight hours. <laughs> Rose definitely going to be like, eight hours? I don't know if I've worked on anything for eight hours in my life. Well, you're going to have to do that. you got to teach yourself how... How to get into the rhythm of shooting and reloading a pistol as fast as you can. Because if you don't, then when you need to be loading that gun and when you need to be pointing at somebody, it's going to be a problem. Right. So this will prevent me from getting shot at while I'm not able to shoot. Well, it's certainly going to make it a little bit easier for you to, say, shoot somebody else. At least a little faster. I'll take that. Eight hours is nothing. Do I have to click it a bunch more times? No, Jesus, no. You don't have to Eight do that, Eight more gunshots. Stop it. <laughs> Into the sky. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Comes back, Ro has a horse and a cowboy hat. It's like, where the fuck did you get the... <laughs> what, what, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> what happened? There was a montage. <laughs> uh, so, and, and that is more or less uh, the first few... Uh, real, really, days mm -hmm. of practice. Like you are, you are constantly firing, reloading, firing, reloading, firing, reloading. Until by the end of the week, it's like second nature. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah! Um, and you have reduced the number of times you messed up the uh, how to place the powder inside the gun. <laughs> uh, you only had to make that mistake once because, boy, when you pull the trigger and you hear a click and nothing happens, it's a little scary. <laughs> <laughs> oh Jesus! Especially because your first instinct was to look down the barrel and go, "What happened?" <laughs> oh, oh no! I felt my my non-existent motherly instinct kick in, and <laughs> I almost just kicked Rose ass. Uh, so, <clears throat> pardon me. Um, so, um. That's more or less your first week or two uh, working with uh, Sheriff Mercy. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, next week, uh, uh, he winds up uh, teaching you uh, a little bit, uh, a little bit more on how to work with your gun, mm -hmm. namely how to take care of it, because he notices very simply that uh, that thing is looking pretty. Uh, pretty crap if I do say myself. I like Ro just looking at it and being like, oh shit. I was supposed to clean this, wasn't I? Uh, yep. You're supposed to clean that thing basically every day. Mm. Yeah, it's been a while. I'd imagine so. Uh, so uh, you're going to have to learn to clean that thing up. And that means you're going to have to learn how to pull that thing apart. All right. Oh, God. Is there any chance at this point it could blow up and kill me? Uh, there's no gunpowder inside the thing, right? I don't remember. <laughs> Maybe. Why, why don't you remember that? Listen, it's been a long fucking couple of days, okay? <laughs> yeah, well, you're going to have to pull that thing apart as many times as possible. All right? Okay, I guess. All righty. Uh, and uh, you then begin uh, going about pulling apart that uh, flintlock of yours as mm -hmm. carefully as possible. As this first time, it is very, very slow. Uh, uh, you remove the uh, wooden paneling from the handle itself. Uh, you unscrew that and uh, begin to release the trigger. Uh, you remove the actual plate on the back of it, which turns out to have a rune on the back. 
mm -hmm. uh, which uh, you would know, uh, which which several person would explain to you. That rune right there is uh, part of how the new uh, these firearms work. Um, there's a little contact rune that uh, when you pull the trigger, presses that one, and that one just ignites and gets really hot. So what oh, it does cool. is it gets hot as fast as possible. Once you press that trigger, it ignites the gunpowder, it fires out the bullet. Hell yeah. Guns like mine, and he pulls out his... Um, uh, his harmonica clip pistol, which it, you know how uh, most pistols have a, a clip that goes in the handle. Mm -hmm. uh, this one has a, has a clip that goes sideways uh, across the barrel. Cool. And as it fires, like the the harmonica clip uh, goes from left to right. Fancy. This one, on the other hand, is uh, a bit different. Uh, same idea, but um, it's basically got just some to hit a little like ignition point on the bullet. That's why you can't be firing my bullets inside of your gun. It doesn't work. Mm. So no stealing bullets from you then. It's probably not going to work. At That's all. fair. And I, I mean, I definitely didn't intend to do that. Sheriff. You got it. <laughs> my days of crime are behind me. Mm. Hmm. <laughs> right. So, uh, I'm going to want you to pull that thing apart, clean it up best you can. Um, do you have, do you have the tools to do that? Uh, it'd be, tinker, it'd be tinkering tools. Absolutely not. Are you sure? Because <laughs> me, the DM, I think that you did buy them. Did I? If they're not, if you're not on your sheet though, it don't they're... matter. I don't see them. Then they're not, it doesn't matter. They're gone. Yeah. I don't see anything. Oh, well. Oops. All right. You're going to have to buy yourself some tinkering tools. Right, right, right. Just, it's just, just, a, just a set of fine stuff that'll actually like let, let you mess around with screws and stuff. But um, yeah, you're probably going to have to get that. Okay. Uh, the, cost of, okay. The, cost of, yeah, the cost of tinkers tools are 50 gold. Okay, that's not bad. And they weigh about the, a third of you. Cool, I love they that are, for they me. They are 10 pounds. Jesus Christ. <laughs> so, ugh. do I put it under, I don't put it under proficiency, I just put it in equipment, right? I think, maybe. What was that? Do I put it under, okay, I see the, I'm not proficient in it, obviously. Uh, you're not but. proficient in it yet, but okay. once you get the levels in, your, in, in, the, in the new class, uh, you will obtain uh, proficiency in that. Okay, so for right now, should I put it in equipment or proficiencies? <laughs> uh, put it in both. Okay, I can do like, that. Drag and drop it into proficiencies, drag and drop it into uh, equipment. Okay, I always forget that there's a drag and drop, and at this point, probably shouldn't forget that. Um, boom. Not doing proficiencies. Boom. Done. I believe. I believe it should be correct. Let me quickly check. Uh, yep. Yep, you're good. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, and that's actually something that you should become very familiar with because um, if your gun does misfire, mm -hmm. uh, you'll have to uh, you'll have to unjam a gun and it, you know it takes yeah. an action to do so and it needs your tools. Mm -hmm. Got to know how to uh, use that. That takes me to the next thing. Uh, you're going to need to learn how to do that fast. Right? Mm-hmm. So, because if that gun jams in the middle of a fight, you're going to need to be able to unjam it and then get it back into working order as fast as you can. Yeah, that makes more sense than my current plan of action if that ever happens, which, which is, is throw the gun. So, right. but then I would have to buy a new, it's a whole thing. and Which leads me to my second point. It might not be a bad idea to carry a second pistol with you, just in case. Oh ho ho! Now you're speaking my language. More guns. You're probably you keep it on the side. You're not going to be firing two guns at once. That's stupid. <laughs> Says you. <laughs> mm, how are you going to reload a gun if you got one gun in your other hand? Did you not just hear what my current plan is? Throw the gun. <laughs> two so guns. Gonna have, so you're going to have two shots. 
and that's it. Well, in a react like in a in a dream situation, I would have a lot more guns, <laughs> and I would just keep firing. Them. <laughs> it would work. It would be fine. <laughs> Got it. So in a dream situation, <laughs> Ro is Reaper. Exactly. A bunch of little mini shotguns. Uh, all right. Well, until that does happen, mm-hmm. you should probably say, just carry a spare in case something goes bad. Right, right, right. right. Can do. How much is another gun? Uh, <laughs> you'll probably have to go find that out for yourself. Oh, boy. Gotta do everything myself make, around here. <laughs> you could always make one. Oh. It'll take time, it'll be expensive, but you could definitely do it. Uh, sign me up for yes. <laughs> All I'm right. do that. <sighs> oh, boy. All right, in that case, I'll, uh, I suppose I'll teach you how to do that. Um, <laughs> and, oh, boy, he's going to have to teach you how to craft a gun. <laughs> Jesus. Um... It's it's largely going to depend on what kind of gun you want. Mm-hmm. Like if you have a specific idea, uh, let me know. Oh boy, I have literally. I know like the only guns I know are the ones that shoot bullets, and that's all of them. Thank I got, you. I got nothing. Literally, like that's me speaking with all my right. bad so intelligence. I, I can I can send you a PDF. Mm-hmm. Um, with a bunch of ideas for guns mm-hmm. and stuff like that. There will be prices, but I'm going to tell you some of the prices might be different. Okay. All right. Like fair warning there. Um, so you could definitely do those. And I'm going to, I'm just going to let you know this ahead of time. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, you can draft off and create new weapons uh, at my discretion. Um, pricing, I think will be about half. It'll take time. So this is going to be basically one of the few times you'll have the opportunity to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, if you have a really fancy idea, like something that, because you have to realize these guns are semi-magical, like Mm -hmm. they have runes in them. Hell yeah. So you can be a bit more creative with it if you want. Mm Hmm. But, um, basically that's one of those things that I'll have you get back to me on a little later. Okay. Like you don't have to do it right now. You don't have to do it immediately. Just whatever you want. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, See, if I was funnier, I would have done a whole bit just now about, like, crumbling up my blueprints that I had, but <laughs> it's dead week, and I want to die. So, I'll save that joke for another time. Don't worry about it. <laughs> jokes for days. Alright. So, um, aside from that, he'd also probably teach you a few tricks uh, <laughs> with your gun. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Bless you. you see that a lot. Thank you. You see that a lot of his tricks are oriented about around being uh, precise and uh, being quicker with the gun, uh, mm-hmm. and you realize really quickly that that eh, doesn't exactly work well for you. Mm-mm. I mean, you got a couple of them. Like you can make a, you know, you can be really good at shooting a gun or make a gun hurt more or fire a gun. Uh, but um, really, uh, you found out that sometimes just having a pistol in your hands uh, or knowing how to kind of present yourself with folk, that can make things a hell of a lot easier for you. Mm-hmm. You also find out some of the best ways to avoid getting hurt or just to get the fuck out of the way. Uh, so Got basically, uh, mm-hmm. you now have a bunch of deeds that you can choose. Mm-hmm. Um, you only get to, to know two right now. Right. I'm uh, as as uh, you are using a uh, variant of the gunslinger that I created called the Mysterious Stranger. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the deeds, uh, you can look through. You can select any of those two. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can just decide, all right, that's it. I'm going to have this one and that one. And you don't get to cho- uh, choose a different one until... Uh, yeah, you don't get to learn a new one until level seven of uh, Mysterious Stranger. Right. Gotcha. Oh, God. I don't know what two I want. <laughs> uh, that's one of those things that you can take your time on. But more or less, okay. um, <laughs> after Mercy's pretty sure you've got the basics down, 
and he's pretty sure you're not going to destroy uh, destroy everything with your new, uh, well, destroy your new parts for your new gun. Mm-hmm. Um, he would then say, "All right, I'm going to leave now. Don't, don't kill people who don't need to be killed. All right." Well, it's good for you that I'm in the business of only killing people that need to be killed. Right. Okay. As far just, as I know. <laughs> just be careful, all right? I probably won't be, but just to ease your worries, sure. Oh, boy. All right. <laughs> just to be a jerk, Ro takes her gun out of the holster and shoves it like down the front of her pants. Oh, like a geez. goblin. <laughs> She's like, this is I carry, right? <laughs> nope. Stop doing that. No, no, that's where it's at now. That's happening. <laughs> Take care of yourself, bro. No promises, but uh, you probably should also do that anyway. I need to. We're both leaving. Bye. Yeah, <laughs> keep making your gun. Uh, and Sheriff Mercy would leave, uh, leaving you the opportunity to uh, uh, continue finishing up your gun, which uh, you will unveil come Saturday. <laughs> All right, and I'll and I'll send I'll send over the PDFs to you. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, but uh, with that, um, that is the end of Rose um, time skip. Nice, petty criminal status, cool new tricks, gun, criminal moniker. I'm about it, criminal moniker. Really, just a really good one. It's a yeah, really good. <laughs> brilliant. It's excellent. <laughs> I texted uh... I texted Jessica and I said, out of context, Martha Stewart. Martha so. Stewart. <laughs> Martha Stewart. So, um, Mercy. Yeah. What do you want to do for your time skip? I want to rework my levels. Uh, and is there anything else? If I can make money, yes. If it's. There's it'd only be, two other. You would be doing side work, more or less. Yeah, and I, I can get jobs really easily because of that feed I have. Even uh, if I couldn't get them from... No, well, that's that's the issue. That feed does help, but the problem is what you're doing for most of the time is going to take up a huge amount of time. Yeah. So you really won't be able to do mercenary work. I didn't figure. Um, the only other thing I could see her doing is she does technically have a job available at the wood shop. Uh, that is actually entirely doable. Uh, so you could definitely do a little bit of side business working, uh, doing woodworking. Um, and uh, we can get to that. Uh, well, actually, no. I, I think we can, we can do that now. So, um, Mercy. Yeah. Um, as the team begins to uh, kind of split away and start doing their own things, uh, Calaron appears to be getting... Uh, getting the uh, the estate ready for the most part, and um, um, uh, working on a few other things of his choosing, um, and all of your other friends are are more or less kind of wandering off and starting to do their own things. Um, you decide that the best option for you would be uh, to start making a little bit of money on the side, and you feel like your best option is probably going to be working uh, doing some business for that. Uh, the uh, the wood uh, the carpentry shop uh, men at work uh, working Eight with Mr. Ashton too. Hill. How many? Yes. I just hate. How many music references I've stuck into this game? Is Ashton Hill also a music reference that I? He's not. Got? If he is, it's completely unintentional. Fuck. Anyways. Um. So uh, you make your way into the shop, and uh, you see Ashton uh, behind the uh, behind the counter working on some finer uh, pieces of woodwork. And he looks up from what he's doing, and goes, "Oh, hi there." What's up, man? Good to see you. Yeah, not much. Good to see you again. Uh, did you get fired? No, surprisingly. Oh boy. Well, how good on you I, there. However, I did unintentionally end up in a war with my boss. Which may or may not be losing right now, but we'll work on it. It's fine. Indeed. All right. Well, is there something I can get for you? Are you looking for some kind of uh, 
you looking for furniture? You're looking for more wood glue or what? Do you have any work? I certainly got some work for you. Yeah, I can do that. What kind of work? Well, you'd be helping around the shop, uh, doing a bit of carpentry, uh, you know, carving things, making furniture, chairs, tables, stuff like that. Occasionally you get a, uh, some kind of a bigger job given to you by, you know, some kind of a special contractor or something like that, but that's different. Uh, it doesn't happen often. Um, you would have to be listening to me, of course, uh, as well, I'm your boss. But if you're looking for part-time work, I can certainly offer it for you. Yeah, that works for me. And I promise I will not glue a dick to your door. That's good. Uh, I'm sure I can make another door, but I really would rather not. So, uh, and by the way, um, Ashton will probably be one of your best bets for buying new furniture and stuff. So yeah, I, I, that, I was thinking that because like the weapon racks, the dummy, yeah, the we like the weapons racks, the dummies, um, uh, the target, the, the targets would be a little different. You probably get like a good size, like bale of hay and use that more for target practice. Yeah. Uh, or, or you can make a wooden one. Off. Either way, Ashton's going to be helping out with a good chunk of it. So it's like, oh, hey, let's make furniture. Oh, wait, I know the assholes we're making this for. Yes, exactly. It's me. Yeah, it's it's you. <laughs> uh, so with that being said, uh, allow me to quickly do one thing. Um, storage. Uh, let me just quickly put this into the little uh, estate notation, as it will be important. Um, Facilities, for the moment, as has been already set up, you now have a training area uh, paid for paid for by you. So please knock off 100 gold from your inventory. Oh no, I only have 1,100 gold. What will I, will I do? You, how will you ever survive? Uh, feel free to mention in chat to the others that uh, the training area has been paid for. Yeah, I'll do that. Now, uh, I'm going to need you to do me a favor. Uh, you've, you're training woodworking tools, so just roll me that. Um, this is going to be for the first season. Um, I think we're going to go, let's see, you're in, you're in fall right now. Yeah, Rainer, second fall, time. winter, spring, and then we'll do one last one for summer. So we're going to split this up into four quarters. Okay. So you're going to do your first roll uh, for woodcarver's tools. All right, you got a 19. Uh, that's pretty, that's actually quite good. Uh, so it's my one skill I've never fucked up on. It really is. Uh, it's, it's, it's quite impressive. <laughs> Maybe Mercy so, should have just become a woodcarver. Uh, that's two gold. Yeah, per week. Bech. That's that's really bad. I I disagree with that. Uh, so I'm gonna say that you're gonna get two gold per day with that kind of work. Okay. Uh, it's for the remainder of fall and There's ninety days in a season, and we were on the sixty fifth, I think. So it's gonna be about twenty five days. Times two, you make about 50 gold. Okay, okay. So please mark that down. I already did it. Yeah, 65th, I was right. Yay. Uh, next, uh, well, actually, as uh, you begin doing this, um, this side work for Ashton, uh, you also, on the side, uh, begin carving out the dummies uh, used for uh, physical melee practice, uh, the, uh, the stands that you have uh, holding, holding outside, holding the wooden weapons. Um, and you set up the stand for the, uh, the actual like archery range that you have, because you're going to set up several targets at uh, various distances, because you've got 
more than enough room for that at this house. Yeah, it's a bit disgusting. It's mm. huge. Um, and you realize that you'll probably have to like kind of switch out those archery targets every once in a while because they'll probably get pretty, pretty messed up. Especially but for the moment, you think it'll be fine. People use the gun. Yeah, yeah. You got a feeling that uh, the repeated, uh, the repeated blast noises that you're hearing from, uh, uh, from your companion, uh, Row. That that may prove to be more damaging. And you you find that a few of these days uh, towards the beginning of fall involve you putting in a lot of hard work and a lot of effort. And when you finally go back to your room at night and you lay yourself down to go to sleep, you fall into a very deep slumber. And you begin to dream. Um, and in this dream, you find yourself standing near, uh, a, a large plains area, um, grass is about knee height and it looks to be this very open field and it is nighttime and all you see above you is the stars. This beautiful night sky with uh, the trails that Desna carved into the sky, red, pink, white, uh, cutting through them. And you appear to be all alone. What do you do? Probably look around and see if she can see anything past the fields. Uh, more perception check for me then. Perception. Fourteen is it horrible, but it's not great. It's not bad because the person walking up towards you is not trying to hide himself. Uh, you see walking towards you, um, a very flamboyant looking man wearing very shiny plate mail with a hat that's slightly floppy uh, and has this bright colorful feather flopping off of this. Okay, uh, on, its, on a scale of Avro to Harvey. Uh, he's, he's, he is not that kind of flamboyant. He is, he is noticeable flamboyant. He is tough to miss as he, uh, on this bright shiny plate mail he wears, there's also this bright purple sash he has tied around one shoulder. Uh, and he has his big floppy hat with a colorful feather. And uh, carrying with him and like using it like a walking stick, uh, he has this very large great sword uh, with a slightly curved, well, this, with this kind of widened edge towards the uh, sheath itself. Um, uh, and you see that this man has this um, curled mustache and um, uh, kind of this chin strip that comes down to a point. Uh, and he walks up towards you plants his sword down on the ground and looks at you and goes, why, hello there. Yeah. Hi. I'm guessing you are Miss Mercy, correct? That's a name I go by, yeah. Excellent. Good to I hear. Like know. She's got like both fists up in front of her, like fight or flight ready, not sure which to go with. Now, now, you won't be needing those fists. Your sword eventually, but not right now. Please, do you know my name? Bright shiny man? Actually, I'd allow you to roll a history check. Oh no. <laughs> uh, you would have advantage on this as it is stuff that you would know. Oh shit. That's already. Um, the name, you, you know the name because you've heard stories of this man, but he matches the description perfectly of the boisterous swordsman Fisetter. Boisterous swordsman? Yes, and you're the gonna greatest swordsman who ever lived. Wait, wait, wait. Like the constellation guy? Exactly. She's gonna point at him, look around, 
point at him again and go, I know you. That's good to hear. I would hope you would. Otherwise, Desna would have chosen quite poorly. What the fuck is going on? Well, well, first off, my name is Vicera. Vicera. Second, I have been sent to you by Our Lady to train you. You're talented as a fighter, but you need a bit of direction so you may properly So you may, oh, so you can do what you want, more or less. I know I shouldn't have eaten at the Lucky Sapphire last night. The boss man does not cook as good as Maddie. His cooking is not that bad, but it has <laughs> nothing to do with this. Uh, I'm going to go with... Why you? Because I'm the greatest swordsman that ever lived. Yes, you were also an infamous liar about it. No, I was boastful. But still, I'm the greatest swordsman to ever live, and I can teach you how to properly... Uh, look, I can help you. What do you want for it? I want very little. I've already been given what I deserve. For uh, Miss Desna found it fitting to put me in the stars and to leave me there where I belong. Yeah, you're definitely bright enough to be one. Exactly. Now you, I'm sure that you, you want to, uh, you're a follower of Desna, correct? Have been most of my life, yeah. Wouldn't you like a little bit of assistance from her at times? What I'd like is the ability to protect people. And she can help you with that. She can give you that extra oomph that you need. But it's not going to come easily. You need to train and become better and become stronger. In fighting a flamboyant swordsman in my dreams will do that? I will teach you much. You'll have to practice out of this, but still, I can teach you. Okay. First, and, for first and foremost, pick up your sword. What? I don't have my... Yes, you do. You have Does... your sword. Do I have my sword? Yes, of course you have your sword. I don't know, she was asleep. It's a dream, of course you have your sword. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> She'll pull out her sword and kind of tap it to the ground twice and bounce on her feet for a few seconds. Okay. And I guess she's gonna try to hit him. All right, uh, roll it. Yeah. You would, you would indeed hit Vicera. Yay. Do I need to roll damage on that? There's no need. I was about to say, I, don't, I didn't think so. Uh, Vicera will then uh, respond in, in, in turn, and he will begin making some swipes against you. Uh, and he will land two quick blows on you, uh, and then you will nimbly duck out of the way. You hit very well, but there's more that you can do with this. It's not as... When you begin to follow Desna properly and, and she starts to give you her assistance, when you hit someone, you can begin to hit much harder. Do you understand? 
Not really, but I don't understand a lot of things. I just kind of roll with it. Well, that's fine. You'll understand in time. Now, this is going to hurt a bit. Uh, and he's going to make a strike on you. And as it hits you, uh, you feel this bright flash of light. Uh, and then it feels almost like you got burnt slightly on the shoulder where he cracked into, where he slashed his sword into you. Mother uh, as he would have let this a divine smite. Dreams aren't supposed to hurt. Learning hurts sometimes. Does my fire still work in dreams? Very. I will say it won't do very much against me as I am still just a dream. But still, you're more than welcome to try. Yeah, but it'll make me feel better sometimes. Indeed. See, that was a taste of what I can teach you. Just a, just a bit. Just a bit of it. Do you want to learn? Might as well. Yeah, let's do this. All right. Put the sword away. We're going to teach you the boring stuff first. I, they always trick you like that. Yes. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to go over the simple things first, like figuring out when something that shouldn't be around is nearby and how to heal somebody by touching them. Touching them or... T Never mind. Well, I won't... I won't stop you from doing it either way, but still. This is going to take a lot of time. I hope you can stay focused. Mm, focus was never my strong suit, but... Well, you're going to have to try. I can try. Uh, and during the remainder of fall, uh, Fisetter, uh begins going about teaching you how to uh, use the very simple beginning levels of uh, Paladin. Uh, divine, so the sense, lay, yeah, divine Sense, Lay on Hand, Spellcasting, and Divine Smite. Okay, I don't have Divine Smite on my sheet yet. Yes. You, don't get, you don't get another an extra fighting style, unfortunately, because fighting styles don't allow you to do so. What do you mean? Uh, with fighting style, uh, you are allowed to select one option, but you can't take a fighting style option more than once, even if you later get to choose again. I thought you get to, you don't you don't get to pick the same one again. You just get to pick a different one. I don't think you get to choose at all. Uh, uh, let me check. I was about to say that would suck. Also, your naming skills are still just top notch. Totally <laughs> don't. I totally don't hate how fucking Fisetter is spelled. Fisetter. Oh, whatever. You know, mm. I'll never say names, right? I'm just going to call him Shiny Boisterous Man. I'm just going to put Divine Smite into my sheet. I think, okay, I take that back. I think you can actually take two fighting styles. That's it. I'm pretty sure I hadn't misread that one. You can't take the same one. Yes, I think I think I believe that is correct. Because I was going to take um, defender and get plus one AC. Yep. Okay, so you're going to take the defender fighting style. Yeah, because I already have great weapon, and uh, the other two don't work out with the fact that I wear armor and don't use a shield. All right, and you're going to be backing up fighter to level three, and paladin to level six. Uh, level, what was it? Four. Four. Yeah. I can. I can numbers good. I'll just let you fix my sheet. I'm I will say oath of treachery sounds so very vile, but it fits best for you. It fits best and really none of the other pathways make sense with Desna. Indeed. Because really like don't. vengeance or devotion. Devotion would be the closest one, but still. But even then. Yeah. Uh, and Fisetter begins teaching you the basics of being a paladin, uh, meaning you are taught the miners of spellcasting, how to do performer lay on hands, and how to do your divine smite. Um, 
And from there, we move on into winter. Um, winter in between well. going to your, your work at, uh, at Mr. Ashen Hills um, and dreaming about uh, Bicetter, uh, you find yourself training routinely at the uh, training gowns you, you made at uh, the estate which I'm assuming your team will come up with a name for at some point. Or not at all. It's up to you. You know, knowing them, probably one of them will. will. Not me. And by winter's end, let's see how much you would have made from uh, Mr. Ashton. Yeah, one second. Adding my new fighting style. Wow, that's the lowest I've ever rolled. Ten. I could, could I do luck? You certainly could. I would allow it. But for this, in this, in this situation, I'm only going to allow it three times. Like three times this entire total. session. All right. Eh, might as well. Fuck it. As no. this is very much disjointed. Why All is right, luck The 10 it is. God damn me. Uh, so you're going by a modest lifestyle. Uh, that's going to make 90 gold uh, for the entirety of winter. Okay. 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 One day I'll be good at math and not need a calculator. One day, day, not today. No, that takes too much time. During winter, uh, as you dream, uh, you continue uh, meeting with and training with Mr. Fisetter. Uh, and the set and the training sessions start to begin to change over time. Uh, by setter, uh, shows up to you one day and says, so you appear to have a fairly good grasp on the smiting and healing and spell casting and that stuff. But do you understand what Desna stands for? Uh, traveling, freedom, meeting your ideals. Yes. Yes, um, but the biggest thing is now that you're beginning to uh, borrow power from her and uh, well, become a proper follower of hers, you need to understand, you need to have an oath, some kind of a, some kind of a way to Verbalize your belief to her. First, know that the path will go ever onward. Life is an adventure, and you're not going to find very much of it if you just sit around. Second, hope will always show, show, show the way. Follow your dreams, all will become clear in time. Third, understand that luck is a fickle thing. And sometimes you need to get a bit of help to deal with it. Hope, luck, travel. And the stars, of course. But that's well, a bit obvious. Would have never guessed, and she's just gonna take a quick look up at the very bright constellations. Oh, right. And that reminds me. You're gonna want to learn to use one of these. And he pulls out um, an odd looking weapon uh, that looks like a. The star knife? It looks like a star knife, yes. Yeah. Uh, it is a, is a four pointed uh, dagger with a handle in the center. Uh, and he kind of braces it so that one of the hand, one of the. Uh, one of the actual blades is pointing towards him and it's kind of like resting on the top of his hand so it doesn't stab him. May want to use one, learn to one using, learn to use one of these. Get a hold, get a hold of one. I can teach you, but well, I can only do so much in my dream. I can't make things just exist. You see. So, so work on that. would I be proficient in it then? Just uh, don't have one. You, 
you, you will become proficient in star knives and you will not have one. Okay, that's just what I needed to know. Yes. I'm going to add that to my proficiencies real quick so I don't forget. And now we're going to start working on a few more things. See, I'm going to have to teach you how how to fight not nicely. How to be a dickbag? Yes. See, I, a clean fight is nice and all, but sometimes you have to use the options that sometimes you need to cheat. All right. Um, so you'll have to learn how to do this. And you watch as uh, Fisetter suddenly appears to be two separate people. Mercy's just going to try to poke one of them. Uh, your hand goes through one. Oh, that's a nifty trick. It is. And both of them appear to move the mouth at the same time, but you can definitely hear that one is talking, the other is not. Oh, I don't like that. <laughs> that's creepy. It can be, but it will also be a very important tool for you to have. On top of other things. But we'll start there, and the rest will seem to come a bit more naturally. All right? Okay. Uh, and from there, I said I will go on to teach you um, uh, the sacred oath uh, portion of your uh of your paladinship. Uh, so, so you will learn the conjure conjure duplicity, duplicity and, and, the poison. and the poison strike. Yes. Okay. Uh, you do also have uh, uh, two spells available to you as a level three paladin, charm person, and expedition retreat. God, I'm so excited for expeditious retreat. <laughs> it's great for running faster. Um, you know how hard it is to keep up with folks. It's very tough. And as uh, as the days and weeks go on further and further, by the end of winter, uh, you find yourself um, feeling healthier. Um, while the rest of your comrades occasionally start to get the sniffles, they get a little sick, you find yourself standing tall and not, not ever even getting so much of the sniffle. Uh, you have the divine health ability. Uh, you're immune to disease. Hell yeah. No more of that being sick bullshit for me. Yes. Wait, that explains why Gail does so much stupid shit. Because he can't get sick. Yeah. No, that's Mercy saying that. I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> and from that point on, uh, Fisetter doesn't have as much to teach you. It's just more honing your skills and becoming better at it and better at it and better at it. And... Um, for the next two seasons, uh, well, spring, leading into summer, uh, Fisetter begins to teach you more about how you should start using your spells. That you can use them to hurt people more, or you could use them to trick them and get them to work with you. Um, you know, teaching you the, the intricacies of your type of magic, as you do have Charm Person, which could help you get people to be a bit more agreeable towards you. Yeah, I don't remember. Yeah, I do get Charm Person at three. You do? Couldn't remember when I got that. Um, so I'm going to need two more Woodcarver's Tool Rolls yep. uh, for spring and then leading into summer. Scroll back up to it. One, two. One, two. Okay. Uh, so we did that. Uh, all right. So those are both very good rolls. The 21 plus, uh, yeah, comfortable lifestyle, plus 25. All right. Uh, so spring, you make quite a bit of money. Uh, you make 180 gold plus 25, so that's going to be 205 gold. And technically, I shouldn't have had you roll that, that fourth one because summer is more or less when we're going to be picking back up with the rest of the team. Okay. Uh, so for spring, you would have made 205 gold pieces. Congratulations. 
I'm almost back up to all the money I had. Yep. No, actually, I am above what I had since we left Veilcrest. That's not surprising as uh, this, it's a good way to ma to maintain money with like a side job, but uh, you, will, you will find out that Gail and Rudy are probably going to be making a lot more than the rest of you. Well, they're doing like mercenary-esque work. They're doing proper work. Yeah. Now, uh, is there the anything thing. else that you would like to do during your time? The only other thing she wanted to do was to use Rudy to try to get a hold of her siblings and be like, yo, those dumb fucks are leaving the continent. Be careful. That's fine. They, they would receive that message very easily. Yeah. And two, uh, she was going to look more into fiends, but I think Rudy's doing that. Um, you can certainly start to look more into it as well. Um, and, uh, we'll handle that with Rudy. Um, actually, we'll hold off on that simply because it depends on who pays for the books in the library. Yeah. Um, and what kind you guys get. Uh, but... Um, by summer, uh, by the beginning of summer, um, you and the rest of the team should be beginning to get back into business. Okay. And she, Masi also changed clothes at some point because... Yes, you would have picked up your, uh, your recolored armor from, uh, from Mr. Asagio. And would you be so kind as to describe it for me, uh, in detail? Uh, I imagine she took the plate mail and took mm -hmm. white for most of it but did the borderline and the light purple that is Desna's color. I, I actually thought you, you would have done like a very dark purple for like a starscape and then done like the constellations on the plate mail. Oh shit, that's better because her, her horns are going to be constellation, which reminds me I have to pay for that. Oh yeah, you're getting like some special hair dye, uh, horn dye? Yeah, and she's oh, getting new clothes. No. So she's got to switch. She's going to probably lose probably about 50 gold or more. Uh, for, for very, for that kind of like detailed work on the horns, uh, it probably would be closer to about a hundred. Yeah. Uh, but you can definitely get it. Yeah. She wants to do the constellations. Um, there was two in particular I picked if I can find my phone. Uh, I'm imagining Pristella and, yep. uh, one of the others. There was another one, but you wouldn't tell me any other, uh, uh, Desna specific ones. Uh, but there, there because are not the one guy amount. helped her, she's gonna get his. Oh, so if I set her and uh, and uh, Priscilla. Yeah. Okay. Uh, when I finish up the full constellation spread, I'll actually show. I'll also show you which ones are if I set her and which ones Priscilla. Okay, but yeah, she's gonna do the black with the white stars. She's gonna get mostly stars on it, and then do one constellation on one horn and one on the other. Gotcha. And and for the record. Um, you would know now with the proper teachings from uh, Fisetter, as he would have gone more into detail on uh, the followings of um, Desna and what it means to correctly believe. Um, most of those constellations um, are hers in some way. She allows them to be there, unless it's something that's not exactly a constellation, like the womb, Lamashtu's womb which is not necessarily a constellation, it's the absence of stars. That's still fucking freaky. It is. I don't like that, and I don't trust it. Uh, with that being said, uh, one day if I said I would have gone to and gone, now, with all of those stars you see up there, while they are all Desna's, occasionally, uh, before the whole warring business, um, occasionally the other gods would mess around with it and do stuff. Uh, Caden, Caden Kalian was, uh, he was notorious for causing trouble. Uh, you see that one up there? Yeah, that's his pipe. He how just kind of left it there one day. How do you leave your pipe in the sky? He decided he wanted to and he did. Simple as that. Sounds kind of like a dick. He's troublesome, but he's not necessarily a dick. Troublesome. Uh, so he's like, whoa. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, yes, of a short. And then there are the ones that just 
Well, I, to be completely honest, I don't know if either you mortals came up with this one and then just decided to name it. Uh, what was it, like? Tassinusius. Uh, that long, stupid string of stars. Yeah, I don't know if you humans came up with it or if Desna hey, decided to pull a prank. I'm not and... humans. Thank you. Oh, more, whatever. You mortals. were mortal once. Mm. Mm. Not anymore. But anyways, I, 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 I don't know if Desna decided to play a prank and make you people believe that that was a constellation or some humans decided to call that a constellation, but that's just a string of stars. It's nonetheless. They are all hers in some way, with the exception of some. And to be frank, even the ones that aren't hers, she probably just allows to be there. So I can't just point up at the sky and go, look, that's a constellation. Eh. You could. I mean, I don't think she'd have any arguments against it. Feeling free to do whatever you wish is more or less what she stands for. I mean, what good is life without a bit of freedom? What good's life without just being able to fuck shit up? Now, there's a difference between fucking shit up to have some fun mm. and then there's fucking shit up to have fun at someone else's expense. Oh well, yeah, that's why you only do stuff that you can fix. Exactly. If you're going to cause trouble, be sure you can fix it. That'd be, if anything, I want you to take that away from all of this. Be sure you can fix your mistakes. And just try to do good. I don't think you and I will be doing much more training. Uh, just continue your practice and go on from there. I may pop in every once in a while and teach you a bit more, but you've learned some of the big things. So you're just going to be a constant voice in the back of my head going, Mussy, don't do that. No. I mean... No, I mean, like, psychologically. I, it'd be great if I became the voice of your conscience, but still. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot you were pretty big into... Being the center of attention, that would make sense for you. Absolutely. Now, with that being said, don't be afraid to pop in and say hello to me or, or our lady every once in a while. Can I ask you something? Yes. Why you? Because. That's not an answer. Seemed like the best one. I don't think, Mor uh, I don't think Morlock was going to be coming by to say hello at any point, and he certainly would have been teaching you stuff about Desna, now would he? Where is she? Who? The lady. <sighs> uh, if I said her seems to get a little touch quieter when you ask that. She's with the rest of her brothers and sisters. She is stuck over in Primus. How does a god get stuck? They make a mistake. All of them. No, I could be wrong, but from what I remember about religion, the whole uppity gods don't make mistakes. That's kind of the whole thing about them being gods, the quote unquote perfect. And she makes a lot of air quotes. Gods are very much not perfect, trust me. I know this, and any follower who's being honest with themselves would know this as well. You're lucky you, cho you chose one of the gods that doesn't have that kind of an ego. But just know that gods are not perfect. They make mistakes. And if the situation is severe enough, they can even die. What can kill a god? 
Another god. Oh, yeah. Lack of faith. Sometimes and... the god just goes, goes and becomes forgotten. There's another distant memory, and eventually they just fade away. And if someone remembers them? That's different. Then they're not dead anymore. But when they've been properly killed, that's it. No, we're vivifying them. It's not that easy to bring back a god. Dead is dead. You Even for Asthma? In theory. What happens if the god of death dies? Who knows? Perhaps someone would fill the place. I'm in no rush to find out. She serves a purpose. As brutal as that may be at times. Now, and he stands up, kind of sheaths a sword, plants it on the ground. I'm going to go back to wandering now. Do good. Keep training. And find yourself one of those star knives. I've got an idea where one might be. All right. Oh, by the way, you may even want to consider asking your, uh, your baker friend. What? Who knows? Maybe she can make something for you or something. How much of my friends... Do, are you just in my head and knowing everything I know? It's the gift of the gods. Oh, that's creepy. Granted, I know quite a bit, but not everything. Still... Be good. And he begins to walk away. I feel like as he walks away, Mus is probably going to take out the crossbow and just try to shoot him. For no other reason than because she can. Uh, okay. Uh, so you, you, you fire off a shot towards him. Uh, and it would hit, but <laughs> it just kind of goes past the room. Uh -huh. Nope. What do you even do in the stars? Well, it's easy. You said it yourself, and he turns back to you. I'm just the center of attention there. Ugh. And your dream ends. And I told you I had a plan for who was going to train you. Yeah, motherfucker. Come on, you had to see it coming. I had a guess it was a star, but I didn't know which one. Would you rather I, the honeybee? <laughs> no, I just didn't know if you had another one that I didn't know yet. Fair enough. Because I would not have put that past you. Oh, and now I get to the joy of adding all my paladin spells. So, uh, from there, um, the team would then pick up uh, in summer.